Martial arts exist. The man's hand slowly falls down, shrouded in an emerald haze of power. The gray-haired man exudes strength. Although unknown to the general public, there are people who have mastered martial arts and used their powers to maintain order throughout South Korea. The man is also one of those who studied martial arts. He tells this to a boy who works part-time as a cashier in a store. The boy's face is broken, and the abrasion is covered with a plaster. He thinks that the man is talking nonsense. Twelve hours ago, Chung High School. One student watches another doing something in the backyard of the school. A schoolboy is doing some exercises. He says that Hukchion is a divine art. He screams and stabs the boy who is standing next to him. The boy falls unable to withstand the blow. His offender triumphs. Another schoolboy comes up to them and says that there is no need to talk nonsense. They just need to take the money and not talk about divine art. The offender laughs and says that he is watching the series Hukchuan Divine Fist, and everyone who watches becomes fans of the Hukchuan sect. The boy who is beaten says that he also watches Divine Fist, but sometimes misses it due to lack of money. The boy's name is Kang Hae Jin, and he is 18 years old. He believes that the importance of battles in real life is too exaggerated. At this time, his hands clench into a fist. He quickly gets to his feet and rushes at his attacker. At this time, he thinks that a real MMA fighter will definitely beat a martial artist. His opponent does not understand what is happening, but manages to dodge the blow. Khan falls to the ground again. The enemy laughs and says that it was amazing. This guy became strong, no one knows how. In some YouTube videos, it seems very strong. The boy begins to kick Khan. He calls him a dirty poor orphan. He tells him that if Khan resists, he must be prepared to be beaten even more. A sudden scream stops the fight, and the boy turns around to see who is calling him. The girl demands that her way be cleared. The girl's name is Wu Ahan. The boy shouts that she is crazy, and if she doesn't want to be beaten, she should find another way. His comrade intervenes and stops his friend. A voice comes from behind Wu Ahan and asks the boys, what are they saying? The boys see who is behind Wu Ahan. They are scared. This is Wang Taesong. He's also 18 years old, and he turns to the offender and says that he demanded to stop abusing children. Otherwise, he will have to deal with Wang Taesong. The boys leave and say it was just a joke. Wang Taesung runs after Wu Ahan, asks if she is okay and suggests they go somewhere for lunch. Wu Ahan replies that she did not ask for anyone's help. Wang Taesung leans over to Kang and asks if he's okay. He says he doesn't have to worry about these guys. Wu Ahan wonders why Kang is getting involved with these guys. She says that if he just stands calmly when they beat him, then everything will end quickly. And if he resists, it will only get worse for him. Wu Ahan leaves with Wang Taesung and finally advises Kang to stop resisting. Khan remains sitting on the asphalt, but his hands are clenched into fists. He gets up and thinks about the fact that he has no money, and why should he resign himself to the fact that it is being taken away from him? He thinks that given his current financial situation, he worked like crazy and went to the MMA gym. If he trains more, he can defeat these idiots. But in the gym, they tell him that he needs to stop working out. He asks the coach why so suddenly, since he regularly pays for lessons. The coach replies that more than six months have passed since Khan joined them, he has talent and technique. But Khan should look at his body. Usually after six months of training, fighters' bodies begin to build muscle mass. Despite all his efforts, Khan has not changed since his first lesson. It's difficult for the coach to explain this, and it's the first time he's seen such a situation. The coach considers further training pointless and promises to return the money for the lesson because he knows Khan's circumstances. Khan tries to object. He asks the coach to allow him to continue. But the coach tells him that unfortunately in this world, there are efforts that are not rewarded. The store where Khan works, Khan arranges the goods on the shelf and thinks about what the trainer told him. He believes that he has studied the training method and can train on his own. It's even better because it won't cost money. There are no customers in the store right now and he is going to start with one set of deadlifts. He takes the box in his hands. The boy performs exercises with a box once two times three times. For the fourth time, he feels that the limit of his strength has come and he falls exhausted to the floor. He feels severe pain, the kind of pain he has been experiencing lately, and thinks that he probably needs to take vitamins. At this time, a scream is heard on the street, then an apology follows, and Can understands that this is a crazy homeless man. Two men accuse the homeless man of stealing something, and he shouts that he didn't do anything and asks to let go of his hand. One of the men says that he needs to take out his bad mood on someone, and he is going to continue beating the homeless man until his mood improves. The homeless man apologizes and asks to be left alone. Can looks indignantly at how two guys beat up an old man, grabs the phone, runs out of the store and pretends to call the police. Hooligans don't want to deal with the police. They run away but promise to return. 
Kant says these guys only pick easy targets and asks if the man is okay. The man asks in response, did he really call the police? Khan replies that he was only pretending, because if the police arrived there would be a lot of trouble. He helps the old man up, and the old man thanks him and apologizes for causing such inconvenience to the boy. Khan replies that he really doesn't like people like these guys. He pays attention to the old man's legs and realizes that the guys saw that the old man was walking with difficulty and decided that he was an easy target. The old man asks the boy who his parents are. And now we are again at the point where the story began. I am also one of those martial artists, says the old man. He thinks that the old man is very strange due to his age, and he decides to play along with him and then send him home. He asks why such a wonderful fighter looks like this. Because I'm on the run, the old man replies. He says to, well, in the past there were various martial arts factions, but now there are only three factions left in South Korea. Royal faction. They aggressively use the power of martial arts to control the world around them. A new Shinshin religious group, they follow God as their leader. And the unofficial government organization MP, which is called the Emperor. They control issues related to martial arts. Without any prior warning, these three factions joined forces to suppress the other smaller martial arts factions. The old man said that he joined forces with other factions to resist, but these three organizations had amazing power. The old man himself barely survived and has been hiding from persecution for more than ten years. He is very careful, and therefore got scared when he thought that the boy would call the police, because he doesn't want to attract attention to himself. The boy listens to the old man's story, and thinks that the old man lives in his illusions. The old man says that Khan did not answer the question, who were his parents? The boy replies that his parents died when he was a child, and he doesn't know them. He asks the old man why he asks him this question. The old man touches the Khan with his hand, which is enveloped in the emerald mist. He says that the Kaon meridians are blocked. Khan hears about meridians for the first time. The historian explains that these are the paths along which vital energy flows inside the body. Even in an ordinary person, many meridians are open. But in the boy, they are completely blocked. It seems that someone blocked them on purpose. The old man says that the Kana meridians have been blocked for at least six months. Khan recalls the coach's words that his body does not change at all. The old man says that the boy's body is not growing because life energy cannot circulate normally in it. The old man says that it is noticeable that the boy is being beaten severely. And in his condition, even a small exercise can cause severe pain throughout the body. If he continues like this, his life energy will leave his body and the boy will die. The old man advises Khan to look for another way and not to strain his body with training, because in this world there are efforts that are better not to do. Khan recalls that the coach told him the same thing today. He says that he knows that he has no talent for fighting, and that it would certainly be easier to just put his head down and stop resisting. But he did not receive a proper family education. He wants to become stronger, and punish those guys who bullied him. This is the decision he made and no one can stop him. He turns to the old man, and says that the old man will either help him, or we can assume that they never met. The old man looks at Khan's hands, which are all beaten up from fights and constant training. Khan thinks that there is no point in arguing with an old homeless man like that, but at this time the old man takes him by the hand. The old man says that he realized that there is no other option. He says he's seen it many times before. People strain their bodies until they collapse. The old man says that he really doesn't want to do this, but if he leaves the boy alone, he will bring himself to death. He touches his hand and says that he will now open the meridians. As soon as it hurts, he tries to break free, but the old man tells him to wait a little longer. And you need to stand and wait quietly, the old man tells the boy. After a while, he says that everything is ready, and, exhausted, leans his elbows on the table. He is very tired and leaves leaning on a stick. Leaving, he says, K. Well, he needs to get better. The boy remains at the store counter in bewilderment. He doesn't even know what to say about the fact that everything happened. Five hours later, Ken returns home after a shift at the store and thinks that this world is so huge, and there are so many crazy people in it. All this talk about meridians is like the novel of martial arts, and in the 21st century, it is impossible to believe in it. But how then did it happen that he will do now? When he was walking through the streets from work, he fell into the hands of guys who were beating an old man, and one of them reminded the boy that he had said that they would meet again. They began to mock him, calling him a nerd and asking why he didn't call the police. They laughed and told Khan that he likes to live righteously, so let him receive punishment. Then Khan grabbed the offender's finger and pulled sharply. The guy let out a wild scream. His friend couldn't understand what was happening, and the bully held his finger and shouted that it was broken. Khan took a fighting stance and said that he regretted that only one finger was broken. He told the guys that he saw how they panicked simply because the police arrived. Then the bully rushed at the boy in rage. 
Khan told himself that he needed to remain calm and watch his attacker's movements carefully. He thought that as soon as this guy came into range, he should hit him. This moment had come. Khan understood it with an inner feeling. What's happening? The huge figure of the attacker was approaching the boy who was standing with his fists clenched. The boy felt his body filled with strength. It was a very strange sensation. His fist was enveloped in a blue haze and he rushed to attack. The bully didn't understand what was happening and was very surprised. Khan ran, and a wave of force was ahead. In a dark alley, two men in torn clothes lay unconscious. And not far from them stood a boy in a fighting stance, whose sleeve of his jacket and shirt had been torn off. The boy himself could not understand what it was. The voice of a homeless man sounded in his head, asking if the boy was feeling better now. Khan realized that now he could not move. An old man appeared out of nowhere, and asked the boy if he now believed in martial arts. The old man looked at the destruction that Khan had made, and said that the boy was not yet experienced, but this was natural. Now the old man did not limp at all. The boy could not understand what was happening. He saw that the old man could not walk, and he could not understand what kind of smoke was enveloping the old man. The old man said that it was time to meet him. He said that his name is Park Chung-un, and he is the leader of the Beggar's Union. But everyone calls him and knows him by the name General. Kion realizes that his body is not moving, and he cannot move. The general lifts the boy onto his shoulder and carries him away. He explains to him that Khan released too much energy and is therefore very tired. The general continues to say that this will go away after the boy gets enough sleep, so there is no need to worry. The old man asks the boy where he lives, and Khan finds it difficult to answer. He says that he lives alone, and there is nothing to steal from him. At this time, a sharp pain pierces the kana from behind. He starts screaming. The old man tells him that he just pressed an acupuncture point. The boy shouts that he understands everything, and asks for forgiveness, and the old man thinks about that only a few hours had passed since he opened the boy's meridians, and they were already so strong. He realizes that Khan may have more potential than he expected. There are a lot of people crowded in the alley who are discussing what happened, and are the two men really so drunk that they are lying motionless? But even drunk people cannot look like this. They lie in this position as if they are praying and resemble sacred paintings. Among the crowd of people is Wu Ahan, who finds the spectacle disgusting. Her friend films everything on her phone, and Wu Ahan tells her that if she's seen enough, she needs to go to school because they're late. At this time, a man appears behind Wu Ahan. He pushes through the crowd of people and goes to the scene. Exclamations are heard in the crowd. Who is this? How huge he is. Wu Ahan gazes after the stranger. People begin to disperse. Wu Ahan lingers, turns around again and looks carefully. At the scene of the incident, she sees two men and one woman who are carefully examining something. Her friend asks her what she's thinking about, but Wu Ahan says that it's nothing. Friend says that Wu Ahan often has strange thoughts in her head. It's time for them to go to school, so they need to hurry up. Kong Hajin sleeps and has a dream about the events that happened at night. A fight, the inability to move, and finally the figure of a general. The boy wakes up and remembers that this is not a dream, and everything happened in reality, and this guy really took him with him. He sees only his shoes at the door and realizes that he is home alone. Although he thought that he and the old man came home together, and probably the old man simply left after he carried the boy to the bed. The boy still had many questions for the old man, but his eyes grew dark. His legs stopped obeying him, and he fell to his knees. Not only his legs stopped obeying him, his body began to behave somehow strangely. The boy felt as if his heart was about to explode, and his whole body was in agony. He begins to sweat, presses his hand to his chest, and cannot understand what is happening to him. His body is in agony. He is enveloped in blue fog. And with a cry, I don't understand what's happening. He loses consciousness. When he comes to his senses and opens his eyes, he sees that he is in his room. He really hopes that he is sleeping and does not understand why his body hurts so much. He decides that he needs to see if he has any injuries from yesterday's fight. And what he sees brings him into incredible amazement. His entire body has changed and is now composed of defined muscles. He raises his hand and sees his muscles growing. Although this surprises and frightens him, there is another problem. Blue smoke is coming out of his ears. Kan doesn't understand what this symptom is. This is called life energy, says a voice. The general returning to the room tells the boy that there is no need to make noise in the morning. Now he will explain everything. Therefore, it is better to sit down. Khan accuses the old man that it was his doing, and while he was sleeping, the old man made changes to his body. The general looks at him and laughs. Then he puts his hand on Khan's back, makes a diagnosis, and says that the blood circulation is stable and there is nothing to worry about. Khan continues to insist that the general did something to him while he was sleeping, and the general says that he just returned and has not done anything with the boy since last evening. 
Khan shows him his powerful biceps and indignantly demands an explanation. The general says that because the meridians were blocked, the body did not change. Changes began as soon as they opened and vital energy began to circulate throughout the body. Khan remembers how the old man held his hand in the store and opened his meridian. The general claims that Khan's appearance is not his doing. After all, he himself trained tirelessly despite the lack of results. The boy achieved everything on his own because he worked hard. The old man says that when he saw that Khan had grown 20 centimeters overnight, he was very surprised. He had to go to the scene of the fight at night to clean up all the traces that Khan left in large numbers. He tells the boy that he will definitely be caught if he uses martial arts thoughtlessly. He leaves too bright a light behind him, and it is only a matter of time before King God or the Emperor tracks him down. He advises Khan to hide his body for a while. As long as the boy cannot control his life energy, he will leave traces everywhere, and he will be tracked down very soon. Khan doesn't understand how he should hide his energy. Should he really wear headphones? Then blue streams of smoke begin to flow through his nose. Then he decides to plug his nose, but blue smoke starts coming out of his pants. The general promises to teach him how to gain complete control over his energy. The man says that he is a general and will take care of all this himself. Khan asks the old man why he is called general. King God Emperor General, what does this all mean? Sixty years ago in 1062 in Seoul, the leader of the Beggars Union, Kim Jubong, said that the world is going through significant changes in which many things are involved. He believed that the Beggars Union should also keep up and be reborn in a new culture. He talked about the need to change a lot of things, and eight-year-old General Pak listened to him attentively. Kim Jubong said that he was changing the title of leader of the Union to General. Everyone was very surprised by this and were speechless at the beginning. And then they started shouting that the leader is ahead of everyone, and why change the title to General? But Kim Jubong said that there is a deep meaning behind this, so he will not be a leader but a general. The leader of the Hwasong clan was very surprised by this statement and could not understand why the general. Kim Jubong insisted that from now on they would use the title of general instead of leader and asked that this title be included in official documents. The leader of the Hwasong clan thought that the English name sounded very strong. He immediately called a translator and asked what Hwasan would say in English. The translator thought about it and replied that Hwasang would sound like a volcano in English. The leader of the Hwasan clan immediately ordered everyone to call him a volcano. The leader of the Mudan clan was very surprised when he heard these names, General Vulcan. The leader of the Henam clan reacted in exactly the same way, only the shaman had already been added to the general and the volcano, because that's what the leader of the Mudan clan renamed himself. The leader of the Chongnamu clan has already heard that the others are called General Vulcan Shaman and Ocean. After that, a tradition was established to call leaders using English words. At this time, Kim remembered that he was late for school. He was about to run, but his head went blank and he lost consciousness again. When he woke up, he realized that he was no longer in his room. The place where he was lying was completely unfamiliar to him, and someone approached him in the dark. The boy screamed in fear, and the person who entered told him that since he woke up, it was time to get up. This is the location of one of the secret shelters of the Beggar's Union. No one knows about the existence of this place, and Kang can be safe here. The general also told Khan that he would help him gain complete control over his energy. He would train the young man until he could handle it perfectly. But if Khan doesn't succeed, the general continued, then the young man will never be able to leave this place and will remain in it forever. A woman with blue hair said that Tan was beautiful, and there was no one better than him. She said that it is not easy to find a martial arts master without any clues, and the man who was sitting next to her replied that this is an order. The woman said that she misses the old days, and does not understand how Namgung ended up in such a situation that he gives out such tasks. The man replied that those days cannot be returned, and we need to understand reality. The woman continued to say that thinking about the two who were found in the alley, it was like being defeated by martial arts. The man replied that no traces of energy were found in that alley, and it is not so easy to get rid of them, and if they absorbed them, they should have awakened. He said that he cleaned it up as best he could, and she replied that there was still something left. The man continued to say that among the martial artists who have survived to this day, there are hardly people who would use their energy recklessly. He believed that if these were inexperienced guys, they would quickly get caught. The woman asked, where is this old general hiding? Couldn't he have ascended to heaven? Or it has gone to the bottom, and now it will be very difficult to find it. Two months have passed. The room was completely shrouded in clouds of blue smoke. The general stands in the doorway and demands that Khan completely hide his aura. Khan stands with his back to him, and whirlwinds of power envelop him from all sides. He is very tired. Sweat is pouring from his face. His body has changed a lot. Now he is not a boy, but an athletic man. 
The general continues his studies and tells Khan to try to completely release his energy. The released energy envelops the general in a stream. Huge waves of energy emanate from Khan and fill the entire space of the room. His fists tighten and a glow of power emanates from his hands. And the lamp that illuminates the room cannot withstand such a flow. The general tells Khan that he must admit that he has nothing more to teach Khan as far as control is concerned. Khan asks if he can leave now. He is very angry and considers everything that happens to him to be madness. Why is he kept in the sewer for a month? And the general constantly tells him that he's doing something wrong and lessons are ongoing. Khan is forced to do strange things, eat mice and cockroaches and do physical exercises. At work, Khan was almost recognized as employee of the month. But now he may lose his part-time job because the sick leave lasts only a week and two months is too much. He will not have a salary and will lose everything he has. Khan is in complete despair. The general puts his hand on his student's neck and says that you can't talk to your mentor like that. Khan screams in pain. Well, the general also doesn't quite understand what's going on. Training for ordinary energy control takes a year, and if there is no talent, it takes about five years. These are the basics of martial arts, but that doesn't mean they're easy. Khan mastered them in two months, and the general believes that the young man has frightening talent. Khan gets up and says that he needs to go to school, otherwise he will get in trouble. The general asks, does his student go to school to catch up with the curriculum or is there another reason? Khan says that he needs to go to university. His teacher grabs him again and presses on the painful point with the words, don't lie to me so obviously. Khan waves it off and asks to give him a break. The teacher tells him that he will not stop the young man, especially since he will not listen to him anyway. He advises his student not to forget the main thing. He should not use his abilities. Khan says that the teacher should not worry in order to beat those who bullied him. He does not need to use his abilities. Chunga High School. Again, the same guys are shouting about the Hikjon clan and beating other students. One of them asks, when will you get tired of it? And holds a wallet in his hands. They count the money they found in someone else's wallet and say that fighting has been very boring lately. It used to be fun to beat up a newbie. A voice from above asks them, what are they talking about? The hooligans turn and see the figure of a hooded man looking at them. It is Khan who asks them, are they really doing the same thing two months later? The hooligans recognize Kang Hae-jin and note that he has grown up. One of them laughs and says that a tiger has come to them and understands human speech. Anyway, says one of the bullies, we're glad you're back and as a welcome we'll kick your ass Haekchen style. Khan immediately rushes to the attack and hits his former offender in the face. It hits him right on the nose and breaks it. Blood is flowing from the nose. Khan swings his hand and his opponent falls to the ground and loses his slippers. His friend stands in surprise. Khan takes a fighting stance after being hit. He approaches the second student and says that now he understands how to use the techniques of the Haekjon clan. But novels are just novels. He says that in ordinary life, there are too many movements in these techniques. When he tried them out, he realized that there were a lot of unnecessary movements. The bully doesn't understand what happened, and is it really Kang Haejin in front of him? He can't believe that this guy is the same Kang Haejin he knew before. Are you going to start acting like you normally do? Kang Wu asks the bully. Or I'll start first. He takes a fighting stance, stretches his arms forward with clenched fists. The bully shouts that he doesn't want to fight, but Khan does not listen to him and strikes him hard. The bully flies to the wall. The wallet he took from the boy lies on the ground, and Khan says that it's easier than he thought. Khan picks up the wallet from the ground and says that these guys themselves went after those who looked weaker than them. He gives the wallet to the boy, who looks at everything that is happening in surprise, as he tells the boy to just leave and not even mention to the teachers what happened here. The boy thanks his savior and runs away. The young man thinks that he caught these bastards, but now he doesn't know what to do next. He sees that he beat the hooligans too much. He doesn't want to just leave them lying around and thinks that he needs to hide them somewhere. At this time a voice is heard. What is happening here? Hua Han looks at Kang and the two bullies in surprise. She is surprised that they see Kana Hejin here and asks him what happened here. At this time, on the roof of one of the houses, the general is doing physical exercises and thinking about how good it is to get out. The fresh air is just wonderful. He thinks that if he approaches the matter rationally, then he needed to stop Khan Hejin. And if he did not listen, he needed to be knocked out. But if it were all so simple, then he remembered the fierce face of the young man. If everything had been that simple, the general himself would not have been able to survive. He understands that nothing can be done about it. Besides, Khan is still his student. The general comes to the conclusion that he will need to help the young man. At this time, the men and women who were in the alley come out onto the roof and the woman says that the general really fled abroad. The general turns and says, addressing two men and a woman, it's been a long time since we've seen each other, young Namgun. 
The trio did not expect to see the general here. They do not know how to react. And the woman screams, Why is the general here? The leader must prepare for a fight. And the general calmly says that there is no need to make a fuss. The general looks carefully at the three people who are running towards him. A huge stream of force takes off from the roof of the building. The general releases his power, and three people cannot overcome its flow, although they try very hard. They try to overcome the general's strength and bend as if in a strong hurricane. And the general looks at them and says that he sees that these guys get along well with the king. Three young people approached the old man, and he stood shrouded in whirlwinds of power and mockingly asked them, Is it worth groveling before the king? The young people called for help, and a crowd of men ran out onto the roof. They were all very surprised that they would have to fight the general himself. They tried to break through the powerful shield of forces that the general had put up. One of the attackers pulled out a sword, grabbed it with both hands and rushed into a furious attack. He used the heavenly sword technique and heaven strike, but this attack was drowned out. A huge flash of power rose from the roof. The attackers were amazed at how the old man repelled their blows. The general continued the fight and noted that these guys had become stronger since their last meeting. The attackers had to urgently call for reinforcements. The woman yelled at her partner to take over the call, and he reached into his pocket for his phone. They were going to call the executioner, and the man was ready to dial the number. But the general's staff crashed into his hand, and the phone broke. With one blow making a coup in the air, the general threw the man back. He said that he wouldn't do that, and he needed to fight honestly. The attackers were confused. Some of them did not understand what was happening. Others were simply angry. The old man covered the distance that separated him from the attackers in one leap. He stands in the circle of his enemies, and in front of him lies a man. The general said that he was getting old, and was no longer the same. And if the fight continues, it won't cost you any trouble. He looked sarcastically at his enemies. Young people who saw how the old man behaved in battle did not believe in his weakness. The general began to rotate his stick with monstrous speed, and said that the attackers should take into account his advanced age. He asked them to be gentle with him. The young people could not bear such bullying and began to attack the man from different sides. The general's hands tightened his grip on the stick and transferred most of his strength to it. He repelled the attack and all the attackers flew into the air. At the school playground at the same time, Ken Heijin didn't expect anyone to catch him. Wu Ahan also didn't expect to see Kang here. She asked him what happened here. The young man decided to pretend and pretended that he did not understand what we were talking about. At this time, Wang Taisong came running to the site who was in a hurry to deal with the participants in the fight. He was also very surprised when he saw Khan here, and Khan thought that he had overreacted and needed to look around first. Kung continued to play the fool and said that he had not seen his classmates for two months. Wu Ahan and Wang Taisong both noted that in two months, the boy had changed a lot. Khan said that he recently changed the gym. The new place is just a bomb. He tried hard there and his body began to show progress. Wu Ahan couldn't believe it but Kan continued to convince her of this, after which he shouted that he needed to see the teacher and quickly ran away, leaving his classmates in surprise. Huang Taisong said that the universe knows how to surprise. Wu Ahan remained silent. The teacher didn't even look at Kang Hajin and said that now the boy needs to study hard to quickly catch up with his classmates. The teacher told him to go to class and not miss class anymore. Ken walked along the school corridor and thought that how good it is that the class teacher does not pay attention to him. He knew that he needed to be careful just as the general had told him. The general told him that the God King and the Emperor had deployed large-scale video surveillance networks to track down street martial artists. Therefore, even after completing the training, the young man should not have used his energy or attracted unnecessary attention with his actions. Khan didn't understand how he could not stand out if he had grown so much in just two months. For now, he decided to try to blend into the crowd as much as possible. He wasn't sure if it would work. He sat down at his desk and could not understand whether his plan was working or whether no one simply cared about him. He saw that Wang Taesong was not looking in his direction at all, but Wu Ahan didn't take her eyes off him, and that could be a problem. It didn't look like she was going to tell anyone about the changes that had happened, but she looked as if she suspected Khan of something. The boy mentally screamed at Wu Ahan to turn away from him and look at her textbooks. After class, everyone went out into the corridor, and Khan hoped that nothing else would happen today. Wu Ahan kept an eye on him for a while, but nothing happened. The young man decided that he needed to think about finding a part-time job and going for an interview because he had no money left. He looked in the mirror and realized that with such a look, he had little chance of finding a job as a salesman. Wu Ahan approached him and advised him to remove the plasters from his face if he wanted to find a job. Kong jumped in surprise, and Wu Ahan said that she would not speak for long. But for a while, it's better for Khan to lay low right now. 
because he is in much greater danger than he imagines. At this time, Wu Ahan's friend called and the girl left with her. Khan could not understand what danger the girl meant. At this time, a huge student approached him and said that does this idiot who beat his friends really want to go home quietly? Question mark Khan thought that it was precisely this danger that Wu Ahan told him about. The big man demanded that he come with them. They will deal with him. Khan agreed, but added that he had an interview in an hour so he wouldn't stay long. His words surprised the bully very much. He promised that it would take more than one hour and brought Khan to the site where there was a large group of young men armed with baseball bats. They promised Khan that he would not return home today. Khan saw that all the school hooligans had gathered here and decided to attack him altogether. One of the hooligans said that if Khan beat two of their comrades, this does not mean that he became a big shot. And the second immediately attacked the young man, shouting that now they will show him. But he immediately flew back, and his nose began to bleed. Khan stood in an awkward fighting stance, pretending that he did not know how to fight at all, while his opponent lay in front of him on the floor. He estimated that there were about twenty people here, and if he does not use internal energy but only brute force, then all this will turn into a rather brutal beating. At this time, a dark figure was watching what was happening from around the corner. Less than an hour had passed when all the hooligans were lying on the ground with injuries of varying severity. Khan was focused on not releasing his internal energy, but the more he moved, the harder it was for him to control it. He needed to be more careful and keep all his energy to himself. He was about to take a breath and go for an interview. At that time, a man approached him from behind. Someone hit him from behind with all his might, and Khan missed the blow. For some time, he lost the ability to control the energy, and it left him. Someone's hand grabbed him by the hair and pulled him. Kung stood up and saw Wang Taesong in front of him, who was looking at him in surprise. Wang Taesong saw the energy oozing from Kung's ears, and he shouted with anger and indignation, Loser exclamation point. Where did you learn martial arts? The roof of the house on which the general's battle took place was almost destroyed. Here and there, beaten young people lay, and the general complained that old age had overtaken him, and he began to get tired much faster. He proposed to end the battle, but the Namgung kids tried with all their might to get up and continue. They again rushed at the old man, who stood like a rock and did not move. The woman asked the general why he suddenly revealed himself and what he was planning, and the general asked a counter question. He asked why there was so much doubt in their swords. If they were really going to kill him, there would be no way he wouldn't get a single scratch. Is the ability of the attackers really so senseless, or did they really not fight at full strength just because the generals asked them to? The general continued to teach his opponents, and said that if they want to survive in the world of martial arts, they must behave appropriately. If you doubt it like that, then no one can do anything. The man who attacked the general was unpleasant to hear these words and the woman clutching the sword screamed that the general had no right to say that because he didn't know anything. She shouted that she would now kill the old man, and he repentantly said that he had really overdone it, and now he was leaving. Finally, he said that they would meet again if fate so wished. It turned into a tornado and disappeared, leaving the attackers alone. The man and woman couldn't figure out what the hell was going on, and where did the old man suddenly disappear to? Leader, are you okay? The woman asked the man, and he could only powerlessly clutch the sword in his hands. At this time, the old general was flying through the air, moving further and further. He thought that with the appearance of large fish, they would not pay attention to the small fish. And I really hope that this idiot Kang Hae Jin, it won't attract their attention. At this time, behind the school, Kang tried to divert Wang Taesong's attention and pretended that he did not understand what martial arts he was talking about. Wang Taesong didn't believe that Kang didn't know anything. Out of passion, he hit Khan, and Khan flew several meters away. But he did not fall but sank to his feet, leaning his hand on the ground. He was very angry, and a blue fog rose above his back. An enraged Wang Taesong shouted that the Khan would now come to an end, and if he did not want to die, he would have to tell everything. At this time, Wang Taesong noticed that Kang knew how to control his energy. Wang Taesong said that his father has a business, royal company, in which Wang Taesong is the heir. In this company they call him the prince, and he even feels somehow awkward about it. He is surprised that Khan has learned some things in a few months, and he asks Kang where there are still hidden members of annoying sex. He demands that Kang tell him where he learned everything, and then perhaps Wang Taesong will spare him. Kang asks what will happen if he refuses, and Wang Taesong replies that then Kang will be beaten and destroyed, and rushes at him. Kang dodges a blow of monstrous force, in which Wang Taesong invested all his energy. But Wang Taesong is very strong. The Kang's defense cannot withstand Wang Taesong breaks through his energy. Wang Taesong understands that his opponent only knows how to mindlessly release his energy. He shouts to Kan that he is trash, and asks if he had fun beating those boys with martial arts. 
Did Khan really think that he would be the leader of the school? He continues to beat Kang, and shouts that Kang is still the same sting as always, and Wang Taisung will kill both Kang and the person who taught him this. You don't know your place and you're playing the fool. Wang Taisong continues to beat the young man. Khan cannot do anything with a force that exceeds him many times over. Each blow knocks him to the ground. Khan Hei Jin, Wang Taisung shouts angrily. Why did you study martial arts? Everything would be fine if you kept your head down. He says that Kang would have been bullied quite a bit, and Wang Taisung would have saved him in front of Wu Ahan. Kang can't understand what Wang Taisung is talking about, and what does Wu Ahan have to do with it? Wang Taisong says that these two who always bullied Kang did not act of their own free will. It's all Wu Ahan's fault, because guys have to try hard to look good in front of girls. Khan understands that all this time. He was a toy in Vanya's hands, and Wang Taisong used him for his own purposes. Now Wang Taisong believes it's time to end all this. At this time, Khan rises to his feet and says that he has decided. When he learned about martial arts, he was very nervous and didn't know what to do next. But now he definitely decided that he needs to study as much as possible, and he will think about the rest later. He gets into a fighting stance and releases his energy. Wang Taesong doesn't expect such a reaction and doesn't understand what this geek is talking about. Khan shouts at him that only an idiot thinks that these days there are women who like such methods. And Wang Taesong is not a prince at all, but an ordinary piece of crap. To him degenerate, Wang Taesong shouts and rushes at the Khan. Khan tries to copy his movements, but still misses blows. Wang Taesong calls him stupid and says that you can't learn anything by blindly copying someone. At this time, he continues to strike blow after blow, many of which reach the target. Khan raises his hand and realizes that he was thrown aside. He tells Wang Taisung that he learned something useful from him. If you knead the dough and add density to it, it will become stronger. Wang Taisung is wrong that he is so good with his abilities. Kang continues, his gaze does not express anything good. And Wang Taisung, in fright, shouts for Kang to stop looking at him with this look. He clenches his fists and directs all his strength into them to finish off the upstart with one blow. Kang assumes a fighting stance and tells Wang Taisong to just attack. Wang Taisong uses the king's light technique. This technique is very strong. Yi Kang notices this immediately. He crouches to the ground but stands very precisely on his feet. The fists of both opponents are tightly clenched and each has its own type of strength. And now they come together in close combat. The blue and red mist mix and the fists touch. Huang Taisung understands that his opponent is trying his best and can defeat him. But compared to his mentor, he is nothing. A man appears next to Wang Taisung, who throws a strong blow when Kang misses, and says that now everything will end. The man addresses Wang Taisung and calls him young master. He says they haven't seen each other for a long time. He says that Father Wang Taisung called an emergency meeting for a reason, but because the general appeared. The man went for a walk, felt some kind of energy, came here to check, and it turned out that it was a friend of the gentleman. He tells Wang Taisung that he is now his debtor. After all, he would have saved him a couple more seconds and Wang Taisung would have been severely beaten. Wang Taisung objects. He says that he would still have won even if no one had interfered. The man is angry, but pulls himself together and doesn't show it. He mockingly bows and asks for forgiveness for being wrong. He asks the young master to forgive him with all his generous heart. The man throws Kang, who is lying unconscious, onto his shoulder and tells Wang Taisung that he is taking his friend. The man says that the meeting turned out to be much more fun than he thought. Together with the can, the man goes out into the street and does not notice that a girl is hiding behind a tree. Wu Han carefully watches everything that happens from behind a tree. The main headquarters of the royal company, the city of Jun Wan. A man and a woman walk along the corridor. The woman says that she doesn't want to go there and asks the man to say that she feels bad and left early. The man replies that it is pointless to run away. He understands that the woman doesn't like it, but she needs to be patient a little longer. They approach the door near which two guards are on duty. They call themselves the man Nam Gung Jin Jun, the sixth chief of the seven departments. The woman Nam Gung Jin Jun, the seventh chief. The president is already waiting for them and they enter. There are already several people sitting in the room. These are senior managers of the royal company, seven departments. One of the women says that she has already heard about how the general treated them. This is a woman the second chief of seven departments of Big Godaran, and she laughs at those who entered, calling them a bunch of morons. There is also a third chief of seven departments in the room, Glasses and Kenzu. The fourth chief of seven departments, Tankdo Hyun Bei laughs loudly. The fifth chief of the seven departments, the nimble Ju Manchan also laughs. Gina asks Big what would change if she fought, and Big replies that she would show her best side. She says that she can beat Gina. Gina wants to attack Big, but her brother stops her. Suddenly a man sitting behind him demands that everyone stop. 
The president of the royal company, King Wang Chul Wu, tells everyone to calm down. He didn't call them here to rip each other's throats out. The girls disperse dissatisfiedly to different ends of the room. The king says that General Park Jangun is very strong. No one will blame anyone for the loss, and there is no point in self-flagellation. The hustler asks, why this old man suddenly appeared after hiding all this time? And the tank asks, is he going to miss it? The president asks the brother and sister, was there anything remarkable at the battle site? Chun replies that it seemed to him that the general was deliberately attracting attention. He had a lot of time to escape. If he wanted, everyone who was there would be dead. However, he did not kill anyone, but only wounded a couple of people. It seemed to June that the general wanted to attract their attention, but he didn't want to make a fuss out of it. Big laughs and says that it turns out that the brother and sister owe their lives to their enemy. They always talk about being from a family that was proficient in martial arts. They should be ashamed. Gina really doesn't like her words. The brother stops his sister and agrees with Big's words. Big says that she's bored listening to all this. The men say that if Jun's hypothesis is correct, then something happened that the general does not want to reveal. The glasses begin to say, what is the first thing that comes to mind? But he does not have time to finish the sentence. How the first chief of the seven department, the cruel Jun in Wan, appears on the threshold, carrying Kang Hejin on his shoulder, and saying that this looks like a student of the general. Big is interested in why the cruel man came here, because he believes that meetings are mortally boring. The cruel one replies that sometimes he has to miss a meeting due to unforeseen circumstances, but he tries his best. With these words, he throws Khan to the floor. The cruel one turns to the president and says that this boy looks like a friend of the president's son. They fought. The boy was very good at fighting, so the cruel one decided to intervene. If he had not done this, the president's son would still have won. The cruel one says that the appearance of a general who has been hiding for many years and the appearance of this boy cannot be a coincidence. The cruel one says that they will find out everything when they talk to this young man. And a cruel smile appears on his face. Late in the evening, a light is on in an apartment in one of the houses. The empty suitcase is open and a school uniform jacket lies next to it. This is Wu Ahan's school uniform. The girl changed her clothes and tied her hair in a bun. She's dressed in a fighter's uniform. And behind her back a sword shines, on which the emblem of a bird is visible. The girl leaves the room with a decisive step. She needs to hurry up so she jumps right out of the window. And without any damage it lands on the asphalt near the house. She approaches the house where Can lived, and hopes that here she will find a clue about his origin. She needs to somehow contact his mentor. She takes the handle and opens the door. Suddenly a sharp scream overtakes her, and she barely has time to jump away from the stick that is aimed right at her forehead. The general tells her that she can't just break into someone else's house. Girl recognizes the general, and the general says that the girl is dressed in familiar clothes. The general asks the girl who she is, and advises her to think carefully before answering. Wu Ahan forgive him to put down the stick, and says that he understands him. She says that her name is Wu Ahan. She is the daughter of his highness, and she and the general are on the same side. The general is surprised that Wu Ahan is the daughter of someone he knew so well. The leader of the pure current sect is his highness Wu Yum. He was one of the strongest martial artists, even among those who fought against the emperor. He was strong, wise, and energetic. He lifted everyone's spirits with just his presence. He eventually became trapped and died. The general heard that he had a daughter. If he had survived, he would now be the same age as the general. The general asks Wu Ahan just one question. What happened to Khan and where is he now? Wu Ahan is confident in his suspicions that it was the general who trained Kim. She says his student is now in grave danger. And indeed it is. There are blood splatters on the walls of the room. Kong Hajin is chained and beaten. He is tied with chains to the pipes. The cruel stands opposite him and says that at first everything is going well. He asks Khan if he is going to start talking. Cruel shows Khan a photo of the general and asks if this is really his teacher. And where is he now? Khan does not answer a word, and a grimace of disgust distorts his face. He cannot contain his internal energy, and it bursts out and envelops him in blue smoke. The young man tries to break the chains with which he is bound, but they are saturated with force and do not give in. Cruel says that Khan is under a special technique, so all of Khan's efforts are useless. The man promises Khan to let him go if he answers all the questions honestly. He even promises to forgive the emperor so that he can give Khan a job. Khan spits in his executioner's face and doesn't say a word. The cruel man barely manages to cover his face with a photograph. Then he decides to resort to stronger measures of influence on the young man and goes deeper into the room. He approaches the tools laid out on the table. Khan thinks that it was his own fault that he got into this situation. The teacher warned him, but he was too careless. He gave in to his emotions, and this is what it led to. 
So he decides to take full responsibility and says he doesn't know anything. The cruel one says that at first everyone knows nothing. He picks up a scalpel and it's clear that it gives him pleasure. He says he'll start with Khan's nails. The king is sitting in his office and a man is standing in front of him. This is Glasses and he reports that the reconnaissance group has begun an operation and after a while they will receive some information. The king reads the report and says that this is the key to the whereabouts of the general who showed up many years later. The general must be found no matter what. The king says that you need to be able to catch the general and learn what he has. The bracelet on the king's hand is filled with power. Powerful streams of power flow from the king, enveloping him in red mist. He goes on to say that if they get what they need, they will be able to surpass even the emperor, and their company will be at the top of the martial arts world. But other organizations shouldn't know about this, and the king wonders, what about cover-up? Oki reports that there are no problems today. The company's security guards heard suspicious sounds on the street and became wary. A woman and a man approach us, and the guards try to block their path. The woman speaks one word, get away, and the guards scatter to the corners of the building. The woman and man pay no more attention to them and go inside. There are two guards standing in front of the royal company's CEO's office. One's phone rings, he answers the call, the other also receives the call. But they don't have time to hear anything, because the two figures are already close. The woman says that the guards are very good, and words alone are not enough to persuade them. The guards declare an emergency. They urgently need to report to the general director, but the hand of the man who comes to meet them is already filled with strength. He simply touches the guards with his hands and they groan in pain. Then an explosion is heard, and the guards are scattered in different directions, and the door flies out, knocked out with monstrous force. The king watches everything that happens gloomily. A woman and a man enter the office and say that they have not seen the king for a long time. The female leader of Shinshinki god Shinsenyi says that according to rumors, a long-lost general has appeared. The man says that the agreement must be respected. This man is the director of the Special Martial Artist Management Bureau, Emperor Huang Jaiho, and he wants the king to share all the information with him. Ahan stands near the window and looks thoughtfully at the street. The general comes out and apologizes for keeping the girl waiting. He changed into a combat suit and says that he knows about the emergency, but they need to be fully armed. Considering that they have to fight the king, they need to do everything. What they are capable of. The general cannot believe that Kang Hajin is in the same class as the king's son. This cannot be a mere coincidence. He will also assure that Ahan is also here for a reason. Ahan confirms this and says that she deliberately chose the same class as Wang Taisang. She hid her identity and collected information to avenge her father. The girl asks the general if this is the opportunity she has been waiting for, and whether he can defeat King Wang Chul Wu. The general replies that he has aged, and the king has become stronger. Plus, they're heading to his headquarters, which complicates things. But the general asks the girl not to worry, and promises that he will not lose to the king. Will never lose. The meeting of the heads of martial arts schools continues at the king's main office. God Shinsen he says with a laugh that it has been more than ten years since they all got together. Time has flown by, but they have not changed. The king does not share her joy and scolds her with bad words. The emperor suggests leaving the chatter and getting down to business. He demands from the king that he give all the information available to him about the general. Glasses shouts that there is no information. God tells him not to interfere in the adult's conversations and to stand quietly aside. The emperor advises the king not to be a fool because the emperor himself has bad guesses. The emperor says that there is a fact that the general attacked the king's office. The king has a schoolboy who may turn out to be a student of the general. The emperor tells the king that he underestimated the skills of his special bureau of martial artists. He recalls that 18 years ago, after the end of the war, two organizations entered into an agreement with the bureau. According to this agreement, they all must share information about the surviving illegal martial artists with each other. And the king needs to cooperate with the bureau when he finds such people, including the general. Park Jang-gung alone is a class a dangerous person. The king is obliged to immediately report any information about him to the special bureau. The emperor says that King Huang Chul Wu did not do this, and this is his last chance to gain information. If he does not do this, it will be considered a violation of the terms of the agreement, and action will be taken. The emperor threatens that he will dissolve the royal company. The king does not like the situation very much, but he is forced to obey. At this time, the general and Ahan land near the royal office. The girl says that according to her information, Kian is in the basement of the building in a torture chamber. The general replies that even after so many years, this office stinks. The general is about to go to the basement to get Kang Heijin out. Suddenly the windows of the building are illuminated by a bright flash of someone's power. The general recognizes the emperor's aura. No one has such a fierce aura. 
Undoubtedly, he immediately sensed everything and came to check it out in person. If the emperor is here, then the woman is with him too, because all organizations have made such an agreement. The general tells Ahan that in this state of affairs, it is better for them to retreat. He doesn't think he can fight three at once, and if he rushes in now, they'll be captured and won't save Khan. Ahan says that they will not kill Khan right away because he has important information. The general is preparing to retreat and think over further actions. He says Ahan is right, and his hands grip the stick. The three leaders go to the torture room, which is located in the basement of the royal company. The king knocks on the door. The door opens and Cruel says that he is busy and asks to come back later. Suddenly he notices that the king did not come alone. God says she recognized Zhang Inwan by his nickname, the Cruel One. And he asks, is it true that he is the king's right hand? The king asks if they managed to get something out of Khan. But Zhang Inwan will answer that it was not possible and adds that it has not yet been possible. He says that the boy is very stubborn. There are few of them now, but if you wait a day or two, this does not suit God. She wants to talk to Khan right now. The emperor comes in with her. Khan says he doesn't know anything and won't say anything. God Shin Sen He touches his face and promises to make the young man feel comfortable. She uses her skills and asks Khan where the general is. Khan realizes that he shouldn't say anything to this woman, but his mouth moves on its own and he says, General. The general is here. A voice comes from behind, and those present widen their eyes in surprise. The general stands in the haze of his power, and rage emanates from his figure. The king cannot believe that the general is in his office. The emperor says that this came as a surprise to him too, and asks the general if he thought that the king was alone in the office. The general replies that he knew about everyone, but there are times when a martial artist cannot retreat. He will take a fighting stance, and whirlwinds of power will envelop him. He furiously says that everyone standing here dared to touch his student, and now he challenges them to a fight. Ahan sits alone on the lawn outside the royal office. She can't move. After her conversation with the general, she felt the influence of his power. The general immobilized her and ordered her to sit here. He told her not to worry. He would free her when he returned. He was tired of watching the young die for the old. And if you are a martial artist, there are moments when you cannot retreat. The general is ready for battle and defiantly awaits a retaliatory attack. Kim can't believe she sees her teacher here. The general tells him that he will soon be free. He needs to be patient a little. The king clenches his fist and uses the imperial rosary technique of the first phase. He accelerates and uses the imperial battle strike. In response, the general uses the first phase quarterstaff style and demonic fire. Both opponents collide in close combat, and their forces try to defeat each other. The general manages to deal a strong blow to the king, and he flies to the side. But he lands on his feet, his hand throwing out flames of power. The general shouts to Khan that he needs to deal with these guys first. The king calls the general an old man. He shouts to Brutal and Glasses, who are standing nearby to run away from here and protect the employees. Cruel does not want to leave the cheerful company, and Glasses joyfully supports the order of his superiors. The king shouts that he will deal with this old man himself. He forbids everyone to get involved in the battle. The employees leave, and the cruel one says that even the Almighty cannot stop the king now and they can leave. The general notes that the king was as self-confident as he was. That's how it remained. The king uses the third phase imperial rosary technique and flies above the general. He says that he is simply confident and uses the ferocious tiger domination technique. The general notes that over the years the guy has become much stronger, but repels the attack. The king says that he trained specifically for this moment, but Grandpa is not capable of anything. Now the king will get revenge for the defeat he suffered 18 years ago. The general agrees that the king has become magnificent. He swings his battle staff, whirlwinds of power envelop him. But not only the king became stronger. The general uses the quarterstaff style. His sixth phase is the glancing blow. The king cannot do anything to counter such a blow and misses it, but he still gets to his feet. The general notes that his opponent is very strong, because such a blow is not easy to withstand. He attacks the king again. At the same time, he breaks the chains that bound Khan. The king is temporarily stunned and cannot understand what is happening. The general picks up Khan and asks if he can stand. Khan says that he himself is to blame for what happened, and there is no need to save him. The general replies that it is the teacher's duty to protect his student. The king, in a rage, puts his hand into his bosom and pulls out a grenade, and throws it at the general and his student. There is an explosion that fills the entire room with smoke. But the general is already running toward the exit. He holds Khan on his shoulder and says that the king is stupider than he thought. He runs out of the basement into the office corridor. But then God and the emperor meet him. God attacks him. She says she watched the battle, but could not stay away when she saw the general leaving. The emperor tells the king that he gave him the opportunity to fight one-on-one, -on -one, but the situation has gotten out of control and they need to intervene. 
The general with Khan on his shoulder stands against three strong fighters. He asks Khan if he can escape and receives an affirmative answer. The general throws the young man out of the basement and tells him to run away, and the general will detain these three. Now he gets into a fighting stance and offers to fight for real. The three attackers don't mind him. They are ready to fight. The general says that if they need his life so badly, they can come and take it. Khan, powerless, knocks on the closed basement door with his fist and calls for his teacher. He thinks that if he had listened to the teacher and behaved normally, he would not be in this situation now. A voice is heard behind him, which says that he did not think that his grandfather was so strong, and Khan managed to escape. Kung turns to see cruel Zhang Ihuan, who is very happy to meet him. He invites Khan to fight and wants the young man to show him what he is capable of. He promises that he will fight with one sword. Kang gets to his feet and says he will kill Zhang Ihuan. In the locked basement, the emperor says that the general is trying to buy time so that his student can escape. He asks the general if he really thinks he can handle the three of them. The general replies that they will check it now. There is an explosion of power. The general uses the second phase combat staff move, and he points his staff at the king, who happens to be in his way. The king is stunned by such a sudden attack. The general adds the style of the advancing staff and the edge of the blade, and the king has difficulty blocking these blows. He thinks that the old man has become very strong over the years. The king fails to completely block the blow. He misses it and flies towards the wall with terrible force. A grimace of pain and despair appears on his face. God and the emperor watch the battle and realize that the enemy is very strong. File, old man. The king groans and tries to get up, and the emperor realizes that the general has innate strength. He uses life energy to become stronger. The general believes that since he is fighting against three, this is absolutely fair. The emperor asks the general if that boy is really so important to him, and the general replies that the emperor has always looked at people as a resource, and he does not understand this. The general says the basement is too cramped for a four-man fight, and he suggests changing the location. He spins a ring of power and breaks through the ceiling. Brick fragments rise into the air. The entire royal company building lights up with explosions of power. Ahan watches in surprise, as the building opposite her tilts and almost falls. Three people are running, trying to escape from the fragments of stones that are falling on them. The general hovers above them. He is shrouded in an emerald haze of power. Stones fly and fall. Everything is mixed up in the royal company. The three martial artists prepared for the battle and realized that it would be very difficult. The general roars that he is now starting the fight for real. In the office corridor the walls are shaking, and John Ihuan says that the fight of the century is taking place there. His heart skips a beat. He invites Khan to start the fight, and says that since he is out of shape, he will succumb to him even more. He will fight with one hand, and will let Khan go if he hits him even once. Kong lunges at Ihuan, but he easily dodges. Cruel asks if Khan really can't channel his energy correctly, and why is he so weak? Khan is very angry about this. Try again, says Cruel. Your teacher is taking a risk because of you, and you are nothing of yourself. Kong cannot stand the bullying and shouts that Ihuan is a degenerate. Then he tries to pull himself together and calms himself down. He understands that Ihuan is too strong and cannot be defeated simply by force. He easily dodges all of Khan's attacks. Kong believes that the fact that Ihuan considers him a weakling plays into his hands. He pretended to be weak and emotional and lulled the Ihuan's vigilance. But Khan carefully monitors his opponent and as soon as he sees his weak spot, he will hit him there. At this time, a serious battle breaks out on the roof. The general attacks the king from all sides at once with inhuman speed. The king can barely hold back the onslaught of his opponent, and there is no question of attacking. The end is about to come to the king. He can no longer resist. God comes to his aid. She appears in front of the general and shouts, Stop! She is completely shrouded in her power. But the general, with a huge effort of will, breaks the flow of her power. He will not allow them to join forces. He uses his power as a shield, and God flies away. She is very angry that her attempt to destroy her opponent failed. The emperor approaches the general from behind with a huge ball of power in his hand. But the general turns in time and manages to block the terrible blow with his staff. The fighters collided with such force that they were both thrown away from each other. The emperor's shirt and suit sleeve were torn. He attacks the general again, creating a fiery wall of force, and the general surrounded himself with emerald rings that act as a shield. At the last moment, the general flies up and leaves his opponent alone. The emperor looks up and sees the general standing high. The general takes a breath and thinks that his three opponents are very strong. Emperor Huang Jiho. Even though the general uses his innate strength, there is not a scratch on him. There was almost no time left for the general. If he continues to absorb life energy, he will end. His opponents stand below and look at him. Imperato sensed something and orders the fighters to get ready. The general expands his rings of power and swings his staff. 
He believes that this way he has a chance to win. Taking the quarterstaff along with the cut causes all three opponents to stagger back. The general leans on his staff and jumps down. The iron armor style adds destructive power. A huge explosion shakes the entire building, a cloud of emerald power covering everything. Down below, Kang and Ihuan felt strange tremors. They even found it difficult to stay on their feet. Taking advantage of the moment, Khan attacks his opponent. Ihuan looks at Kang with disdain. He steps aside a step and thinks that he will end the fight now. But it's too late, and Khan's fist cuts through the space. There was a huge hole in the Royal Company office building. Half the floors were destroyed, and a lone figure stood below. The general was rising to his feet after his jump down. The emperor, who was standing below, said that he underestimated the general, and considering that he used his life energy, his power exceeds all expectations. He continued that it was impossible for one, even two fighters to cope with the old man. The king was badly beaten and cursed the damn old man. Bog clutched her wounded hand and complained that her favorite dress could now be thrown away. The general understood that he would not be able to cope with three, and even his staff would not help him. The emperor said that he saw that the general's strength was running out. He decided to finish him off quickly and with one blow and raised his hand over his opponent. At this time, another battle was going on on the surviving floor. Kan dealt a strong blow to Ihuan when he relaxed. Ihuan's nose began to bleed and he flew to the side. Such was the force of the blow. Khan did not believe that he had succeeded. Ihuan sat up with difficulty and tried to bring himself to his senses. The blow made an impression on him. He said he was surprised that Khan kept waiting for the moment to strike and struck with all his might. He continued that if Kang had hit harder, Ihuan would have died. Khan was very surprised by this, but the young man was completely exhausted after the attack and realized that he could not even raise his hand. However, he got into a fighting stance and decided that he would fight on willpower. He shouted to Ihuan to get up and continue the fight, but Ihuan was sincerely surprised and asked why continue the fight. He reminded Khan that he promised to let him go if he hit him just once. The cruel one asked Khan if he really wanted to fight further. After all, then he will die. Ihuan said he always keeps his word. Besides, he really likes Khan, and he laughed. He released Khan and said that maybe they would meet, and then have fun from the heart. He said that old people were fighting in that direction, and Khan could leave the building. At this time, the ceiling and walls began to crack. From a strong explosion, a wall flew out and debris scattered in different directions, almost hitting the young people. Ihuan said that this happened at a very bad time. A picture of the battle appeared before their eyes. The general defended himself, and three of the strongest fighters in the world were approaching him. The general was all wounded and held on with all his strength. Khan shouting, teacher rushed to the general who did not expect to see him here. Ihuan tried to detain the young man. He said that it was okay that the old man would die. If Khan runs there, he will die. And why did the cruel one let him go? He suggested quietly watching the battle from here, rather than meddling in it. The emperor said that the general greatly surprised him. He exceeded all the emperor's expectations because he used up so much life energy and is still alive. The trio of fighters advanced on the exhausted general. The king rejoiced that now his enemy was at an end. God said that now the general was finally exhausted and would not be able to resist. The emperor raised his hand and a dragon's paw was woven from his power. He was going to finish off the general with this blow. The general could barely stand on his feet but continued to challenge his enemies to battle. He wanted to take at least one of them with him. Three fighters, surrounded by the smoke of their forces, were in no hurry to approach the wounded but still dangerous old man. At the same time, a red fist, a fiery fan and a red-hot hand shot up, and a fighting staff flew towards them. With the last of his strength, the general blocked all three blows with his staff. The emperor was very unhappy that his enemy was still alive. The general tried to jump and get away from his opponents, and the emperor saw how the Ihuan was holding back the general's disciple next to them, and was about to strike in the style of the yellow dragon of the first phase. In a huge leap, the emperor was about to hit Kung Heijin with a dragon strike. The rays of emerald power sparkled so brightly that they blinded everyone around. The general instantly returned to the battlefield and managed to get in the way of the deadly blow. He took it upon himself. Khan could only scream with all his might, teacher, and escaped from Ihuan's hands. The emperor said that he was sure that the general would return to save the boy, and he was right. The general coughed and realized that this was the end. He told himself that he had not lived the best life. Then he looked at Khan, who was again supported by the Ihuan, and decided that at the end of his life, he had managed to do something great. He touched Khan with his hand, which was shrouded in emerald power. Dying, he bequeathed to his student to stay alive. The emperor waved his hand and drops of blood spilled into the air. The assassination of the general was accomplished. Khan screamed and struggled out of the cruel one's steel hands. Grief clouded his mind. The emperor went to the exit 
and as he walked, gave an order to the Ihuan to now kill the general's student. Ihuan squeezed his hand and blood sprayed from Khan's mouth. He fell to the floor breathless, and the emperor noted that they had some good booty today. The emperor ordered the king to clean up the battlefield and went to the exit. The king was covered with wounds and was not very happy about being commanded. God said that at the end the fight was no longer very interesting and also went to the exit. Ikhwan the Cruel said that he also had nothing to do here and was leaving. He looked at Khan's body, which lay under his feet, and said that it was a pity for the boy. He was very capable. The Ikhwan made a phone call and called a cleanup team and ordered them to dispose of the corpses. In the forest, a group of people were digging graves. Nearby lay two bodies in bags. They were discussing the news that the famous general had died, and now they were burying him. He went all the way to the emperor and what happened in the end. They discussed the fact that the boy was apparently a student of the general, and the general died while saving him. One of the gravediggers said that the boy was so young, and he was unlucky that he chose the wrong teacher. Can was lying in a bag and his eyes were closed. However, in the place where the general touched before his death, an emerald fire of power flared up. It grew stronger and stronger and finally exploded. This surge of power burst out of the ground. The gravediggers closed the black bag containing Kang Hei Jin. They discuss how the victim is so young. The guy chose the wrong teacher. The fire of power burns more and more in Kang Hei Jin's body, but his eyes are still closed. The flow of power becomes brighter. It bursts out. Khan lets out a low groan, but the kidnappers hear him. They don't believe the guy is still alive. One of them swears strongly that the crooked emperor cannot complete anything. It just creates problems for everyone. And he swings a shovel over the bag, preparing to deliver a fatal blow. A knife flies from behind him, knocks the shovel out of his hands and sticks into the tree. The one who threw the knife asks if the guy is still alive. The bandits are perplexed. Who is this woman who challenged them? Huahan resolutely says that he will not let Kang die at their hands. She will take him with her. The kidnappers, in a panic, realize that the girl has tracked them down, and someone has turned them in. The third of the bandits retained his composure and shouted to his accomplices that it was just a woman. She needs to be killed and two corpses buried. Men armed with shovels rush at the girl. Wu Han's attack was fast and precise. The knife hit the bandit in the neck and blood flowed and wounded the second one. The girl took a fighting stance and drew her sword. The remaining robber pulled out his knife and demanded to know from which clan the creature that dared to attack them was from. Sword technique, pure flow of four seconds and the water stream silenced the bandit forever. The girl's movements were lightning fast, and he was unable to repel a single blow. Wu Ahan rushed to the bag and opened it. Kong Hai Jin was in a terrible state, but the memory of strength burned smoothly and brightly. Wu Ahan breathed a sigh of relief. The guy is seriously injured, but alive. Is it really thanks to this green glow in his chest? However, you can think about this later. Now the main thing is to get him out of here. The girl lifted the bag with Khan's body onto her shoulder. She hoped that if Khan was alive, then maybe the general could survive too. Suddenly she heard the third bandit calling for reinforcements. He began to threaten the girl. With one kick she knocked him out. After which she ran away with the body of Khan, who never regained consciousness. She didn't have time to take the general's body. Khan lay unconscious and delirious. Pictures of the general's last battle surfaced in his subconscious. The general fell, killed by vile enemies. Blood covered his face. Screaming no, Khan woke up and sat up. He was all bandaged. He couldn't figure out where he was. Someone entered the room. The guy couldn't understand what Wu Ahan was doing here, who sighed with relief when she saw Kang waking up. He tried to run to help his trainer, but was too weak and did not remember what happened. Wu Ahan promised to tell him everything. First, Khan must calm down. After some time, the girl finished her story. When the general touched Khan, it was all over. The guy tried to comprehend what he heard. She followed them to take the bodies of people dear to her, but it so happened that she saved Kang Hei Jin. At least him. There was still a trace of the general's energy in him. The teacher used his last remaining strength to save his student. Khan must now value his life. Forget about everything that happened and run away from here. He needs to leave martial arts and start a new, quiet life. Wu Ahan will help him create a new identity. Kang thanked Wu Ahan for her help. But what about the fact that she wanted to avenge her father? They can take revenge together. Kan doesn't want to run. Wu Ahan turned to the guy indignantly. Didn't he listen to her at all? But Khan interrupted her. The general was the only adult who took care of him. He opened his meridians and taught him martial arts. And in the end, he gave his life for him. Therefore, he will not think twice and cannot act differently. If Wu Ahan refuses, he will take revenge alone. Wu Ahan laughed. Khan himself saw how strong these three were. Does he hope to at least scratch one of them? Khan realized that he was no match for those three. But there is a simpler and more reliable way. 
The thirst for revenge was clearly visible on the guy's face. After some time, he came to an open basement. The general's cloak hung on the wall. He felt the secret lock on the wall and pressed it. The door to the secret room opened in front of him. There were various swords and daggers hanging on the wall. Kellen took off his jacket and was enveloped in rays of power. He roared that he would become stronger than these freaks. A few weeks ago, in the same basement, the general called his student. Kan was fast asleep. He even snored in his sleep. The general thought that the boy was obviously very tired and silently walked out of the basement. Suddenly, the walls shook. Kan woke up with the thought that an earthquake had begun and shouted to the teacher to stand by the column in a safe place. The teacher stood against the wall, in which a door opened, which the guy did not even suspect about. Kan rushed to him, shouting, What happened? The teacher was unhappy that the bolt was unscrewed at such an inopportune time. His student had already seen the secret room behind the hidden door. It was very clean. Can wanted to go in and see what was there. The general strictly ordered him not to enter. He pressed a pressure point on the student's shoulder. He'll think about letting him in once the guy knows the ropes. The general didn't know when that day would come, but Khan would definitely become stronger when he started to enter here. Now Kang Hei Jin stood in the secret room, but did not know how exactly he would become stronger. Weapons and books are stored here. That's understandable. But what does the laptop store on the table? Khan sat down at the table and turned on the computer. A folder appeared on the display with the inscription, Hei Jin. He opened it and read the letter. If you are reading this, then I am dead and you survived. I can't say this is the best outcome, but I'm still happy. If everything turned out this way, I want you to live a normal life. Don't think about revenge, forget about martial arts, and just continue to live a quiet life. But if you came here and are reading this, I can't stop you in any way and I can't block your path. I can only help you and leave simple explanations. The items in this room are the legacy of martial arts from 18 years ago. I gathered and protected what was left of my fallen comrades. These items are one of the reasons why I am being pursued by the king, god, and emperor. Of these, the king most wants to take possession of them in order to strengthen his power. All the ancient martial arts artifacts are in this room. I leave them to you. Kong Hei Jin carefully read his teacher's will. He further wrote that he organized everything in the classification folder. Let the student choose a suitable artifact for himself and study it. The teacher knows that the guy can handle it. After finishing reading, Kang Hei Jin thanked the teacher. He made his choice. It became a combat staff. Kang Hei Jin walked over and removed the artifact from the wall. He squeezed it in his hand and became confident that he would become stronger. And he will definitely destroy these bastards. The time has come for grueling training. A month passed. Khan continued his studies. Two months, then six months. Khan did not leave training for a single day. The staff was always with him. A year later, both Khan and the staff were enveloped in a wave of powerful energy. The girls were coming home from school and wanted to go to karaoke. They call Wu Ahan to come with them, but she had things to do. One girl was surprised that Wu Ahan was not going with them, but the other one whispered something in her ear. She was surprised whether Wu Ahan had gone crazy, but her friend advised her not to cling to her. The girls walked down the street. Wu Ahan looked attentively at the phone. She was tense and walked down the street not noticing anything. Someone called out to her and asked if she did well in the entrance exams. She turned and replied that he dropped out of school and what difference did he make. Standing in front of her was Kang Hei Jin, with a staff behind his back. The girl noted that he had become stronger over the year, it was obvious. She didn't think his training was that serious. Wu Ahan saw the power that enveloped Kang Hei Jin. She couldn't believe that such results could be achieved in a year. The guy was surprised. Before that, they met once a month, but she never praised him. The girl replied that he was not strong enough then. Now they can begin. She made a plan. Could Kang stick to it? He Jin replied that it was good that she thought of everything for him. Hua Han advised the guy not to relax. He was not the only one who had been training all year. Wang Tai San climbed the stairs to the roof. Wu Han called him there. A year of hard training has borne fruit. He hoped that they would drink coffee and if everything worked out, he could continue. She was probably tired of waiting for him. A man's voice replied that everyone had been waiting for him. Wang Taesan was taken aback. Kung Hei Jin continued that the wait lasted for a whole year. It's time to start the second round. He extended his hand, which held the staff. Wang Taesan couldn't understand how this could be. Khan died a year ago. A voice came from above that said that information was being hidden from Wang Taesan. Wu Ehan added that the guy does not occupy such a high position in the organization, and they don't tell him everything. She jumped down. Wang Taishan was so narrow-minded that he made her task very easy. Taishan was surprised at first and then delighted. Turns out, Wu Ahan also practices martial arts. That's why he was drawn to her. They will be a perfect couple. Now she will stick to him herself and there is no need to try. Hei Jin realized that Tai San had not changed a bit. 
he was a fool and remained so. Hua Han left the guys and went about her business. Tae San rushed after her. She promised him a date and now she's leaving. Disorder. He will make her obedient. But Lee Jin blocked his way. He pointed his staff at him. First we need to do the second round. Tae San's anger knew no bounds. Wu Ahan jumped off the roof as Tae San screamed loudly for her to come back immediately. He was about to run after her, but received a strong blow to the side with his staff. He was enveloped in a dense cloud of energy and decided to fight. He first used the Phase 1 Imperial Rosary technique and the Imperial Battle Strike. He Jin began to spin his staff, parrying the blows. Wang Tai San wanted to quickly send the bastard to the next world. His attacks became even more furious. The Fierce Tiger Domination technique sent many powerful strikes of power towards He Jin. But they all shattered under the light energy of the staff. It looks like the scoundrel was hiding somewhere and training with the artifact all year. With his hands blazing with energy, Taysan jumped high to reach his opponent in mid-flight. He clenched his hands raised high above his head. The fifth phase of the Fierce Tiger's strike, and this stick will not be able to save the opponent. He directed all the destructive energy towards He Jin. There was an explosion and everything was covered in crimson fog. When the fog cleared, it became clear that Taysan's arms were blocked by one of his opponents. Without much effort, He Jin held back all the enemy's strength, holding the staff behind his back. Kung Hae Jin threw Taesan far back and closed the distance. Wang Taesan did not expect that He Jin would be able to strengthen his abilities so much in a year. His face was distorted with anger. He Jin agreed with Taesan that he didn't need a staff at all to fight him. He threw it aside and clenched his hands, preparing for another attack. Taesan directed the energy into his fist again. He Jin mockingly stated that Wang Taesan need not be afraid to attack. He will succumb to it. Hu Ahan watched from below as the roof of the building was enveloped in streams of power of different colors. She did not notice how two people approached her, who said that the girl was very imprudently walking alone through the city at night. It won't be long before you die. A guy and a girl stood in front of her with dissatisfied faces. Hu Ahan replied that this was their area, and she was usually more careful. The couple was surprised that they were known. The guy recognized the sword that Wu Ahan was holding behind her back. It was called Pure Current. Hu Ahan replied that she knew Namgung Jin and Namgung Jina, the only living representatives of the Namgung clan. Now they are swordsmen, one of the strongest members of the group of nine, and the leaders of the five great families. Jin drew his sword and asked why Wu Ahan called them here. Hu Ahan replied that she was going to destroy the king's organization. But to do this, she needs help from within the organization. Brother and sister couldn't believe their ears. The girl directly asked Nam Gung's brother and sister if they agreed to cooperate with her. Gina decided that Wu Ahan had gone crazy. She doesn't know how strong the organization they belong to is, they have hundreds of fighters, not counting other personnel. Does the girl really think she can do something alone? This is impossible. Hu Han confidently replied that it was possible. Of course, the king's company is huge. It would be difficult to defeat a hundred members of the organization who are proficient in martial arts. But this is only if all members of the company were at the same time. Gina listened carefully. Now there are dissatisfied people in the organization. These are people who were absorbed by the Kulevo company during the war. They are ready to rebel as soon as they have a leader. Gina quickly replied that they weren't complaining about anything. Huahan asked why then did Gina ask the question, is it possible to destroy the organization? If she was happy with everything, she wouldn't even listen to her. She saw her brother and sister at work. Their high position is just a sign. In fact, they just wander around in search of hopeless fighters, and they are not allowed to take part in important matters. Although at first glance, it is clear that they are the strongest in this organization. How many years are they going to endure self-neglect? Jin Namgung interrupted the girl and said that even if she was right, why did she think there was not a single attempt to rebel? Because everyone understands that they cannot win. Everyone knows what the king and other leaders are capable of. Wu Ahan thinks she can bridge this power gap? Wu Ahan confidently replied that she could do it. She has one person who has enormous power, Kang Hei Jin. Hei Jin continued to fight on the roof with Taesan. Taesan already appreciated his strength and was in no hurry to attack. Then He Jin was the first to attack. His fist hit Taesan's outstretched arms, and Taesan again could not stand on his feet and flew back. He screamed loudly in rage and pain. Before Taesan could fall, Hei Jin attacked him again, and he struck him in the body, almost knocking the wind out of his opponent. Taesan could no longer get up, and that was just the beginning. The blows flew at Wang Taesan one after another, not giving him the opportunity to come to his senses. Pictures of the general's death flashed through He Jin's head, and he became increasingly frantic. He took revenge for his teacher again by beating Wang Taesan again. Taesan couldn't lose to this weak weakling he remembered from school. 
He gathered all his strength and used the fourth phase Imperial Rosary technique. The deadly roar hit He Jin and threw him upward. A bright glow shot up above the roof. Taisan rose to his feet. He is the successor to the royal organization. He is the one who will rule the entire underworld of this country. That dirty bastard can't stop him. Let him lie there and not dare to rise. Now he used the Imperial Rosary technique, Super Phase. The energy surged high up. He Jin calmly said that his opponent looked bad. Maybe he overheated because of his anger. He stood up and regretted that he had given in to his emotions, thereby giving his enemy a break. Now he won't let his guard down. Wang Tai San became even more angry and rushed towards the guy with a roar. He Jin prepared to repel the ferocious attack. He ducked down and released his power towards Tai San. Tai San flew straight into his opponent's fist. The blow reached its target and now Tai San was thrown back. He Jin infuriated him from the very beginning, even when he was a minor student. Now he lay there and thought that the bastard was pissing him off more and more. He Jin caught his breath after the attack. He needs to calm down. If someone stronger had been in Tai San's place, he would have already been killed. He walked over to the unconscious Tai San and took his phone. He found a number in it under the name Father. Wang Chul Wu, a surprise awaits you, wait a little longer. In fact, He Jin needed to get out of here quickly. Although he chose an inconspicuous place, he still made a mess here. He took his staff, put his phone in his pocket and put it on Wang Tai San's shoulders. In a few leaps, he crossed the roof and jumped up. He landed with his burden in the place that they had agreed upon with Wu Ahan. She came up behind me. He asked if she did everything she planned. The girl replied that she did everything she could, but He Jin did an excellent job. He was nervous at first because Wu Ahan scared him that Tai Jin had become much stronger, but it turned out that he was not so strong. First, Tai Jin needs to be tied up. The girl handed the guy long red chains. When He Jin completed the task, Wu Ahan explained that these are special chains that absorb energy, so the prisoner will not rage when he comes to his senses. He Jin was familiar with the action of the chain. The time has come for Wu Ahan to tell He Jin all the details of his plan. But before she had time to do this, Wang Tai San came to his senses with a loud cry. Where is he? And threats against He Jin. He tried to break the chain that bound him, but he failed. In such conditions, it was impossible to tell the details of the plan. The girl asked if He Jin took Wang Tai San's phone. The guy replied that he took it and made sure that the king's number was in it. Wu Han was about to send a threat to the king right now and say that Wang Tai San was being held hostage. Both guys were surprised. Tai San says that a stupid chick thinks she can control his father with such a threat, and Hei Jin that it's too early to act like that. Wu Ahan didn't listen to anyone, and dialed the king's number. He immediately replied that he was busy now, and what did his son want? The girl said hello. Director Wang heard an unfamiliar voice and asked, Who is talking to him? It doesn't matter. The important thing is that his son... Tae San's voice was heard on the phone, calling his father. Fan asked what the girl wanted. Money? The answer was no. She needs him to engage in one-on-one -on -one life or death combat. Let him come tomorrow night to the appointed place at 12 o'clock. Then she let his son go. If he does not come alone, then the fate of his son will be sad. Fan asked if she really thought such a trick would work on him. The royal company shows no mercy to those who lose. This even applies to the king's son. This pathetic idiot not only lost, but also allowed himself to be kidnapped. Tai San confirmed that his kidnappers were stupid, and he said that dad would not follow their lead. However, the king continued, he would not avoid a fight. He would have accepted the challenge without such stupid blackmail. Let them send the address. It will arrive at the specified time, and make her regret that she dared to attack him. Everything went according to plan. He Jin took it upon himself to fight the king. He went to meditate to prepare for the upcoming battle. Hua Han was preparing his fighting staff for him. I wiped it with a cloth. One minute before midnight, He Jin was there. The enemy was not there yet. He Jin was worried that the king would not come. Does Wu Ahan have another plan for this? A bright flash of energy illuminated the space. He Jin put his staff forward and waited tensely. A few steps away from him, the ground exploded and stones flew in different directions. There was a loud voice saying that a woman had called him. If the boy was in league with her, then it didn't matter. The king entered the battlefield. He told He Jin to attack. He would crush him anyway. In the office of the sixth branch of the royal company in Zhangwan City, Jun Namgung, the sixth of the seven departments of the king's company, frowned and held a sword in his hands. His sister advised him not to frown, otherwise he would get wrinkles. Did he really take that woman's words to heart? If what she said is true, then there is a chance. Jin Namgung recalled the girl's words. She asked her and her sister to wait only one day. She will show them that it is possible to resist the king. Jin Namgung decided that they could take their time making decisions. They will see what the girl is capable of. 
He Jin and the king stood opposite each other and prepared to fight. The king immediately remembered the boy. He saw him a year ago. This is the same student of the general. That's right. They reported to him that some woman took his corpse. So he survived and trained for a year to take revenge? He Jin replied that he was counting the days until this moment. The guy must have trained himself thanks to the general's legacy. The king no longer hoped that he could get it. Who would have thought that it would come into his hands on its own? He will destroy the boy, and the legacy of martial arts will be his. With these words, the king slammed his fist against his fist, and a powerful stream of power burst out. The king attacked the motionless He Jin. Imperial Rosary of the First Rank, Imperial Battle Strike. The technicians drove the power towards He Jin with rings. He Jin successfully repelled these attacks with his fighting staff. The king saw that the guy had not been idle this year. He Jin knew that the king was very strong. His son could not compare with him. Using the sixth phase combat staff technique, he was confident that he could definitely defeat him. The cut reached the king and he bent in half. The mighty king was driven back. His attack failed. Without allowing the king to come to his senses, he Jin attacked with the second phase of the combat staff technique, the advancing staff, the tip of the blade. The shot hit the target again. The king knew how the fighting staff worked and managed to put a block in the path of the strike. He laughed and the death roar hit He Jin and the guy flew back. The king was upset that the battle with the general did not last as long as he would have liked. He hoped that He Jin would last longer. But He Jin was not going to give up. He was going to beat the king in a way that he would remember forever. A huge flash of He Jin's power illuminated the battlefield. Wu Ahan and Tae San watched them from above. They saw that Tae Jin was almost equal in strength to the king. Tae San couldn't believe that someone could match his father. Hu Ahan was on guard and ready to get involved in a fight if Tae San started to lose. A voice from behind said that one should not interfere in a one-on-one -on -one battle. The cruel Zhang in one the first of the seven departments of the king's company, was very surprised that Hei Jin was still alive. A year ago, the boy was completely different, he said joyfully. Hu Ahan quickly put a sword to Tae San's throat. She knew the cruel one well. The grabber noted that the young gentleman grabbed it normally, but he warned him that he needed to be careful. Tae San was happy that Cruel had come to free him, despite what his father said. Hua Han threatened that if Inwan took one more step, she would kill Tae San. Inwan replied that he didn't care. They weren't here to save anyone. Both Wu Ehan and Tae San were shocked by this statement. The girl didn't understand who we are. A woman attacked her. Wu Han had difficulty reacting. Their swords crossed. Wu Han recognized the attacker. Big Godaran. The third of the seven departments of the king's company screamed that the scoundrel killed her subordinates a year ago. She attacked Wu Ahan fiercely. She fought back. Inwan approached Big and said that their task was to prevent anyone from interfering with the director's fight. Therefore, Wu Ahan will have fun with them. The girl miscalculated. Who could have known that they didn't care about Wang Tai San? Although Inwan cut the chains that bound the guy, and he, exhausted, tried to get up. He screamed that he almost died and that they were doing everything. Inwan was surprised. What kind of complaints? Tai San is alive. What else does he need? Let him hide in some corner and not interfere if he does not want to lose the life that cruel Inwan accidentally saved him. Tai San was speechless by such impudence. Big Godarang was ready to start the fight and didn't care about Tai San. She attacked Wu Ahan in anticipation of a great fight. Wu Ahan jumped back and dodged the axe blow. At the same time, she carried out counterattacks. She drew her sword and invited her rivals to show how strong they were. Kang Hai Jin heard the sounds of battle coming from the rooftop. He glanced quickly in that direction, but he missed the blow of the king, who asked where his opponent was looking. He Jin flew back. The enemy's blow was very powerful. It was impossible to be distracted for a second. The king gave out a wise thought that if the guy was distracted by others, he would lose his life. His fist grew stronger. He noted that his opponent is well-trained for his age. The general knew whom to take as students. It's even a pity to kill the guy, but nothing can be done. Maybe Hei Jin will give up his revenge and join the king's organization. He Jin couldn't believe his ears. Just now this bastard was telling him about revenge, and now he's offering to cooperate. He did not understand that the king is first and foremost a businessman, and in business it is important to adapt to the situation. In addition, his organization needs strong fighters. Moreover, if He Jin inherited the general's things, then the king would be able to change the balance of power in the world of martial arts. He clenched his fist and showed where all his opponents would be. The guy gets nothing from his revenge. We must go into the future together with the king. He promises him all the best. He Jin laughed. The king doesn't understand anything, and now he will take it in full. He Jin sent his staff, enveloped in force energy, to attack. The king blocked the staff with his hand. 
Both energies merged in the struggle. The negotiations failed. Then the king began the battle in full force, and he Jin could not resist the pressure of the monstrous power. The king's body began to change, his muscles increased, streams of energy rushed out. Imperial Rosary of the Second Phase, the ferocious tiger is released. Hao Jin felt like he was in a manhwa. His opponent could transform. The monstrous blow sent the guy flying again. The king's power increased greatly. The king roared that if he hit He Jin a couple more times, he would change his mind about taking revenge and accept all the conditions. He Jin shouldn't have been distracted while he was fighting the king. Something is happening where Wu Ahan is, but he has no choice but to simply believe in her strength. He counterattacked the king with a blow from his staff. Wu Ahan had just dodged the battle axe technique that Big Godarin had used. Big was already annoyed and used the decapitation move. She didn't expect the girl to be so fast and strong. Wu Ahan used the pure flow sword technique. Both rivals were approximately equal. Now the force has thrown Big away. Wu Ahan continued her sword attack, but In Wan intervened and blocked the blow with his elbow. Big Godarang was very unhappy that In Wan helped her. She was doing a great job anyway. It was difficult for Wu Ahan to fight against the two. In Wan is not so active now, but if he starts interfering, everything will change for the worse for her. She was distracted and barely managed to dodge Big Godarin's attack. In Wan watched the fight and was already getting bored. He suggested we finish. Wu Ahan decided to use the last resort, and her energy increased. At this time, In Wan heard some sounds from below. He turned around to see what was there. The king also heard and began to peer. What was that noise there? Several police cars arrived at the scene of the fight. This infuriated the king. The police shouted for everyone to stop and not move. If they don't follow orders, the police will shoot. The trio on the roof also stopped fighting and looked down. Wu Ahan didn't understand why the police were here at this time. There should definitely be no one in this area. The king was very interested to know which idiot called the police. The police demanded that you raise your hands and follow orders. The king initially thought that He Jin called the police. He vehemently denied this version, and the king believed him. The police posed no threat to the king. But those who come for the police, the police were discussing what kind of thugs had ruined everything. One of them remembered that he had already had a similar case and needed to call reinforcements for UTI. The king knew very well what a UTI was. He thought about it. A minute later, he turned away from He Jin and prepared to leave. Finally, he said that they had finished today. In Wan and Big Godarin left with him. In Wan shouted to the speechless He Jin that he would love to chat with him, but there is no time. The king said that he would wait for a new opportunity to continue the fight. After that, all three pushed off the ground and flew away. The police saw them off with amazed looks. He Jin realized that this was not the time to be idle, and also flew away. He landed on the roof and asked how Wu Ahan was doing. The girl replied that everything was fine. They decided to leave urgently, but Tae Jin remembered Wang Taishan. Where is he? Wu Ahan didn't know where he was. She was fighting with opponents and did not keep track of Tae San. There was no time to look for him, and the guy and girl left the scene. Wu Ahan rented a new place. She got rid of the old apartment because now that the king knows who they are, he will immediately visit there. The guys showed their faces and let Tae San go. He Jin didn't know what to do because Wu Ahan's plan had failed. But the girl believed that a good plan is one that leads to achieving the goal. Ultimately, it should lead to success. It takes into account all unexpected changes. The situation was not the best. It would be good to deal with the king there, but not everything is so bad. They are both alive, and Hei Jin knows that he is not inferior to the king in skills. She's thought of everything. The police prevented them, although they definitely checked that there were no people in that area. Hei Jin assumed that Tae Sang called the police from his phone, which Wu Ahan left near him. Maybe Tae Sang didn't want those two to kill Wu Ahan. The girl was very surprised by this assumption. Tae Sang may be a bastard, but he seems to really like Wu Ahan. Tae Sang, in the midst of the battle, actually called the police and then watched as Dad and his comrades left this place, forgetting about him. They abandoned him. Taysan couldn't believe that Dad wouldn't even try to find his son. The guy didn't know what to do now. The main office of the royal company is in the city of Zhengwan. Out of the fire and smoke appeared the king and his two employees, big and cruel. The king thought they had done a good job today. Inwan fully supported the boss. Everything went perfectly. Big Godharan was beside herself. She wanted to end the battle, but the police prevented her. The king replied that the idiots would appear again because they wanted to kill him. We still need to take action and tell managers to be on guard. Inwan remembered the king's son. He's still alive. What should we do with him? Dad replied that his son was thrown from a cliff. Now he himself must decide whether to die or become stronger. Therefore, he does not need to be saved. 
Inwan noted that Dad is very strict with his son. The king entered his office and poured himself some whiskey. Before he could take a sip, the phone rang. The king answered the emperor's call. The emperor had already heard the disturbing news and suggested talking about it. His face was very gloomy. The king felt that he had nothing to talk about with the emperor, but he said that he had already read the police report. The report stated that there was some commotion at the abandoned plant. They figured it out themselves, but there were those who knew martial arts. The king replied that this was an internal problem. It was a pity that they were caught by the police, but the emperor should not interfere. Of course, if this is the case, then the emperor will not interfere. But he is worried about whether the king's company can solve this problem. If he needs help, let the king let him know and he will send his employees to him. The king shuddered at this statement. He can handle it just fine on his own. The emperor agreed. He recalled that the king's company would soon be 20 years old, and he hoped that the anniversary would be celebrated without incident. The king broke a glass of whiskey on the table out of anger. That bastard emperor always shows off. He must knock down his arrogance. The emperor does not have long left. The third of the seven departments of King Glasses. And Kyung Su listened to the assistant's report and asked again, who did the director fight with? He couldn't believe his ears. The fourth of the seven departments, Tank Do Hyun Bae, laughed loudly when he heard the same news. The fifth of the seven departments, Hustler Ju Manchin, immediately began to wipe his weapon with a smile. Nam Gung's brother and sister listened to the news in silence. When Wu Ahan told them about the evidence, Gina didn't believe her. She didn't think that they would directly challenge the director to a fight like this. They fought with the director and two other strong fighters and survived. It is not known whether they are equal in strength, but they definitely have abilities. Jin Nam Gung didn't know what to do. He went out to get some fresh air. Maybe an idea would come to his mind. He walked down the street in deep thought. From the gateway he heard someone scream. Two thugs scolded the man for not being able to collect the money. He made excuses that that family had very difficult circumstances. The thugs shouted that there was no point in doing charity work. Is it really so difficult to collect all the money? The bandit slapped the man. He shouted that the factions were all the same bastards, and they should be grateful that they were given a job and do it well. The man apologized. The bandit became increasingly incensed and began beating the man. Jin Namgut grabbed his hand. He told the thug to stop it immediately. He wasn't afraid. This was the territory of the manager Jumashan. Is Namgung lost? Jin said the guy was going too far. He didn't believe that Jin Namgung was protecting faction bastards. He must respect all management, but he believes that management is wrong now. If an employee wants to not be beaten and respected, he must show results. With these words, the bandit left. Jin recognized the man. It was Han Song Hyun from the Cheongseon faction. He thanked Jin for his intercession. Now it was very difficult for him. He tried to get used to his new life. He thanked Jin again and left. Jin Namgung silently looked after him. After a moment's hesitation, he dialed the phone number. At the other end, they answered him. Jin told his interlocutor to get ready. He decided, and they need to go to the agreed place. He Jin and Wu Ahan sat and waited. Wu Ahan said that they were waiting for two of the top management of the king's company. That preparation she was talking about. These two. He Jin didn't trust the people at the top. Wu Ahan said that they are followers of Murim, and although they work for the king, they have many grievances against him. They are very strong, and if you agree on cooperation with them, it will help them a lot. The girl hoped that they would agree. Jin and Jina Namgung appeared on the threshold. Jin immediately recognized the student of the general who fought the king, but the genie thought that he had died long ago. He Jin was surprised how Namgung knew him. He saw him a year ago when the guy was lying unconscious. How did he manage to survive and become stronger? Hua Han demanded to give her a clear answer, and then get acquainted. Jin replied that working with the guys is very risky. He thought about it a lot and came up with another idea. He drew his sword. Catch them and strengthen your position in the company. The general told Jin Namgung, if you want to join the strong, show your strength yourself. Jin swung his sword. Blue energy enveloped him. He attacked He Jin and Wu Ahan. This was his answer. The guys jumped up in amazement. They rushed in different directions and Namgung ran past them. His sword crashed into the wall and splashes of stones and concrete flew from it. A scream was heard from behind the wall. Namgung Jin, what are you doing? The nimble man held the sword with his hands and held it back. A few hours ago, in the fifth department of the royal company, Nimble Ju Ma Jong was cleaning his weapon. Jin and Jina Namgung came into his office. Jin asked if Ju Mashan received the report about those who fought with the director last night. Shostriak replied that he received it, and was glad because for a long time they had not had worthy opponents. He has time. He wants to find out their location just to curry favor with the director. 
Jin Namgung said that he knows where they are, and does the hustler want to team up and punch their faces together? If he so wants to curry favor with the director, wouldn't it be better to catch them right away? He himself is not opposed to catching the guys, but the guy is too strong. So Jin decided to share with Shustriak. But no one should know about this. The hustler asked why Jin Namgung Yong went to those above him. The genie replied that Nimble, with his formidable claws, was the best choice. Besides, he was sure that Shustriak would agree. Ju Mashan laughed. Everything is correct. He has nothing to lose. Let's blow these bastards and get a promotion. Now Ju Mashan was in a helpless state. Namgung's sword wounded him. Namgung finished him off and promised that he would send all his other friends after him. Hua Han explained to Hei Jin in a trembling voice that Namgung was not aiming at them. He Jin saw that Namgung had a posture as if he was aiming further than them, but in any case, even if he attacked, He Jin would be able to parry the blow. Sister Namgung apologized. They did not want to scare. They simply showed their effectiveness. The hustler was not the strongest of leaders, but he could be a liability. So brother and sister Zarin took care of him. They said that they would attack with him. They will cooperate with the guys and together destroy the king's company. Jin Namgung immediately asked the question, what exactly is expected of them? Wu Ahan agreed to tell the plan, but first, she sharply threw the sword to the side. It stuck into the wall, and a scream was heard from there. A wounded company employee was sitting there. He was very angry that he was discovered. Gina realized that Shustriak took his assistants with him and did not tell them anything. Wu Ahan realized that they had been discovered. There were several more people there. They could not be missed so that the participation of Nam Gung's brother and sister would not be revealed. The pursuers jumped down and a fight began. One of the attackers shouted for someone to contact the office. The rest should stall for time. But he didn't have time to make the call. He Jin pinned him down with his staff and he had no time for calls. The four fighters prepared for battle. Suddenly Jin Nam Gung stopped his fighters. He recognized Han Xiong Yun, whom he had met in the morning among the attackers. The morning thug shouted for Han Xiong Yun to be useful at least now and beat Nam Gung. There was confusion in the man's eyes. He quietly said, Good, and hit his boss with the sword. He started bleeding. Han So Yun had perfected the highest degree of light wind technique. His evil boss didn't stand a chance. Han Seo Hyun turned to Jin Nam Gung and promised that he would help them, and the boss should have been dealt with earlier. All the attackers were neutralized, and Wu Ah Han began to tell her plan. In a week, there will be an event to mark the company's 20th anniversary. They will strike at this time. And now the long-awaited date has arrived. Hua Han and He Jin were ready and waiting for the time. He Jin was ready to destroy all his enemies. Everything was ready for the holiday. The guests were already gathering. Despite the fact that there were many snacks on the tables, the Nam Gung brother and sister did not eat anything. Jin Nam Gung believed that you need to act on an empty stomach, so the reaction is better. His sister completely agreed with him. Someone familiar voice asked them, are they not eating because they have important things to do after the banquet? Cruel In Wan stood next to them. He believed that when they give you free food, you have to eat it. Jin Nam Gung replied that after this event, he would have to hunt down the general's disciple, so he would abstain from eating and drinking. In Wan agreed that the task was important. After all, even the head of the department suffered. Hustler Ju Mashan's place was empty. Since there is still no news, maybe he died? This was unexpected for In Wan. He thought that Ju Mashan was quite perceptive. Because of this news, the department's fifth section fled, and In Wan had to take over its duties. This infuriated him so much. Jin Nam Gung listened carefully to In Wan but remained silent. When they killed all the king's minions, Hua Han suggested hiding the bodies until the end of the event. The Nam Gung brother and sister did everything in secret. No one knew about their plans. Han Xiong Yun said that everyone who knew the exact information from Hustler is here. The remaining members of the fifth department went on patrol. Hu Ah Han could only hide the bodies. She couldn't have done it alone, and Kung Hei Jin was brought into the case. This did not make him delighted, but he had to get involved in the work. Brother and sister Nam Gung had to try to lure as many people from the defeated factions as possible this week. The more allies, the better. Jin Nam Gung knew that there were many people like Han Xiong Yun, and there would be no problems. He Jin was worried that the event would be canceled if something serious happened. For example, one of the heads of departments disappeared. Brother and sister Nam Gung reassured him. There are formalities. How can you cancel an event because some bastards beat you up? They turned out to be right. Glasses demanded that nothing be canceled in order to at least maintain the image of a great organization. In Wan suggested that everyone stop whining and get down to business. Jin Nam Gung understood that this would happen. But he didn't think that they would all care so much about the death of their colleague. This only played into the hands of the conspirators. Meanwhile, at the banquet, 
Inwan was glad that he had a chance to get together and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Suddenly he saw Wang Taishan entering the hall. Inwan heard that he was locked at home after that incident. What wind brought him here? Did he decide to show up at the event as a successor? Big Godorang felt contempt for Taishan. He's so thick-skinned. It is unlikely that the director is going to transfer the company to him. Inwan put his arm around Big's shoulders. She's wrong, the guy is even nice. They were interrupted by glasses who shouted that the holiday was beginning. The spotlights flashed brightly and illuminated the hall. Everyone present in the hall turned to the stage. The host was ready to begin introducing the distinguished guests. The head of the company, Wang Chol Wu, the king, came onto the stage. The Nam Gung siblings sat silently at the table, tense. Han So Hyun watched the guests carefully. Glasses looked fascinated at the stage from which his boss was about to make a speech. Huang Tai San lowered his head low. The king began to speak. Twenty years have passed since he founded this company. He gathered everyone here to express his gratitude. His humble company has achieved such heights thanks to the hard work of those sitting in the room. He wants to express his condolences to the fallen. Over the years, many have died doing hard work. It is very sad. But the company cannot afford to stop. It must move on and develop. Inwan was in awe of how his boss could beautifully say what he didn't feel. Glasses responded immediately. This is all necessary to improve employee morale. Inwan agreed. The Namgung siblings were waiting for the signal. This will be the climax of the speech. They listened to her very carefully. My brother was counting down in his head. Grow further, said the king. That's three, Jin Namgung noted. Becoming stronger, two it clicked in the guy's head. The company will be reborn as a force that no one can defeat, alone. At this time the light went out. Screams were heard in the hall. What happened? The brother and sister grabbed their swords and rushed to the stage. The main target is the king. If you remove it, everything will be much easier. Jin's path was blocked by cruel Inwan. With a loud laugh, he attacked Jin Namgung. They grappled in a heated fight. Inwan, of course, doubted it, but decided to hide the sword. Now it's useful. Big Godarin joined the attack. Inwan had heard the bastards from the defeated factions whispering in recent days. He made conclusions. Two opponents were approaching Jin Namgung. Inwan's cruel face twisted. Did Namgung really think that he wouldn't notice these strange negotiations? The king turned to Namgung from the stage. What a shame the guy decided to make the wrong choice. But now there will be an opportunity to get rid of unsuitable members of the company. The surprise attack plan failed. The king celebrated the victory. The ceiling above him shattered into pieces, and the battle staff, shrouded in power, flew towards the king. A voice came from above that the plan did not work, but nothing can be done. Everything remains in force. The king raised his head and looked down. He began to accumulate energy in his hands, and he was able to block the blow of the staff that he Jin aimed at him. Splinters of the stage flew from under the king's feet. The attack was powerful. He Jin changed his plan. Now he attacked the king directly. The king's knees buckled, unable to hold back the furious attack. He Jin channeled all his energy into the force. Her cloud enveloped both the king and He Jin. The king's energy was not enough to win. Falling down, the king could not believe that such damage was caused to him by this little bastard. This time the boy finished the game. Now it will be destroyed. The king began his transformation in the air. The hall workers did not understand why the lights went out. Someone said that you need to check everything. First of all, go to the electrical panel. The workers followed the voice. Wu Ahan attacked them from the darkness and quickly finished them off. She rushed to the scene of the main events. They managed to cut off the power and cause confusion. If everything went according to plan, she thought, then the king should already be eliminated. But there was a fight in the hall. Kang Hei Jin and the king were fighting. All the people were on alert and waiting for the enemy. Then Wu Ahan hurried to the banquet hall to help her comrades. Han Seo Hyun encouraged his brothers from different factions to fight against the king's company. There was a chance that today would be the end of their days of oppression. We need to defeat the bastards from the departments and restore our honor. Faction rebels stood face to face with company loyalists. A tank in glasses stepped forward. Tank told his subordinates not to be nervous and to act calmly. These bastards from the factions are an insignificant bunch. It won't be difficult to defeat them. Glasses gave the order to destroy all traitors and people rushed into battle. Jin Namgung fought with Inwan. He managed to joke and have fun. He noted that Namgung made a good commotion here and littered a lot. He will have to answer for this and die. Inwan dealt a strong blow and, without allowing his opponent to come to his senses, rushed into a new attack. He had always wondered how good Namgung was with a sword, but there was no reason to find out. Why shouldn't Namgung show what he can do? Inwan wanted to act for real. Namgung, in turn, attacked the enemy. Their energies clashed in battle. Jina Namgung was running to help her brother when an explosion was heard behind her. 
Big Goderin used her decapitation battle axe technique, and the axe crashed into the floor, not far from the girl. She managed to dodge the terrible blow. Big Godharan revealed that she didn't like Gina from the beginning. Gina Namgung replied that they agree on this. Big always pissed her off. Gina used the sky blue sword technique, and her sword glowed a soft blue color. She performed a jumping strike with Truth of Fate and landed behind Big Goderin. Big looked in surprise at the wound on her shoulder. Insulted, she began to chop with an axe left and right, without using technique and relying on brute force. Gina blocked the axe with her sword. The two blades locked together. Big Godarin was screaming. What did Gina expect when she got involved in this? Is she so stupid that she can't count? The second department is higher than the seventh, and now she will cut off her rival's head. Glasses and Tank ordered their departments to attack the rebels at the same time. They were ready to destroy all traitors. Glasses worked with a cleaver, which was full of his energy. He killed people with one blow. Nobody could resist him. Tank's weapons were crude and powerful. His morning star was huge in size. He caused irreparable injuries to the enemy. Han Seo Hyun saw that they were losing to two department heads. Blood was flowing everywhere. Tank thought Glasses was too sloppy in battle. And Glasses, that the tank is very ignorant. But in any case, they needed to finish everything here quickly and join in Wan and Godaran. We need to combine forces so they can cope faster. And the two of them rushed into a new attack. Han Seo Hyun was already waiting for them. He held a sword and saw a morning star flying at him. A cloud of power surged between them. The morning star was repulsed and the department leaders recoiled. Hua Han came to Han Seo Hyun's aid. She knew well the way Tank and Glasses worked together. They prepared to repel the bandits. Glasses recognized the girl. This is the one who was at one with the general's student. Tank noted that she knows how to fight. Hua Han remained to cover Han Seo Hyun and he rushed to the attack. Wang Tai San found himself in the thick of things. He was very afraid of the massacre that was going on around him. He ran away because he couldn't bear the sight of blood. The king was not distracted by his subordinates. The battle with He Jin required every effort. The imperial battle blow should have caused severe damage to the boy. The king's face was very angry. A huge ball of energy flew towards He Jin, but the guy fought him off with a blow from his staff. All the energy flew up and punched a large hole in the ceiling. The king mentally calculated the losses and how much money was needed to restore everything. This angered him even more. He told He Jin out loud what kind of waste he had led him into. He Jin reassured the king that soon he would not have to worry about this. The impudent boy did not understand that without skills, you could not survive for long on impudence alone. The king struck with the fierce tiger. His body had already transformed enough for such a blow. He growled that He Jin couldn't defeat him if he had already demonstrated his best. He Jin took off his cloak, and he threw it up. The king is wrong. The guy's hand gripped the staff tightly. Power swirled around him. He Jin rolled up his sleeves. His figure in the cloud of power exuded power and menace. He addressed the king with the same words that the king addressed to him. You can't beat me if that's all you can do. A few days ago, He Jin was sitting at the table reading something. There was a laptop nearby. Hua Han came into the room and asked what he was doing. He Jin said that he was reading the documents that the teacher left behind. Did Wu Han see that when the king made the transformation, his attack became much stronger? Therefore, He Jin decided to look for information about the transformation. He wondered what kind of technique the king used. He found what interested him. This is some kind of force technique, sort of like an extreme form of energy control. There are mentions in the records that this is a technique in which one part of the body is extremely strengthened, into which energy is directed. It also says that in order to use this technique correctly, you need a huge amount of energy and the ability to completely control it. But this technique makes other parts of the body vulnerable. That is why most clans do not use it. It is passed on only in a few clans. And one of them is royal, Wu Ahan guessed. It's good that He Jin found this information. Now he will know the king's weak point. He Jin thought about it. The king had a very strong defense. What he's planning will be dangerous, but the risk is worth it. Now he stood in front of the king and transformed. The king recognized the technique. He Jin confirmed that the king used it last time, and now the guy has learned it too. Now using this technique in battle, he feels like he is creating super powerful weapons without the necessary training. Both the staff and He Jin's hand burned with energy. The king was crushed by the toad that the general had such a capable student. His son Tai San was never able to master this technique. Hoi Jin happily confirmed that Wang Tai Sang is stupid and cannot master anything. The king was very sorry to kill such a capable guy. He rushed at him. The guy's mistake was that he used technology without understanding anything about it. The king was confident that he would sweep away the enemy with his attack. His monstrous hands were ready to strike. The king knew about the weak spots and aimed at them. 
Hijin crossed his arms, one of which held a staff. The energy covered almost the guy's entire body. The king did not have time to be surprised when He Jin pierced his defense with his staff and sent a blow to the enemy's unprotected body. With a deafening explosion, the king flew back. His attack faltered. Of course, He Jin left energy for defense. Now he will be able to attack the king properly. The king coughed and could not come to his senses. This bastard was able to reach a high level in such a short time. He Jin began to speed up. His movements were almost invisible. The king should have been worried. Wu Han and Han So Hyun fought against two members of the department. Two blows were aimed at them at once, the punishing mace technique and the fire strike. They barely had time to dodge. The tank acted rudely, and glasses shouted to him to be careful, so he could hurt him too. The tank advised him not to get into the affected area. Hu Han and Han So Hyun felt the same thing. These two have extraordinary abilities, but that's why they can't work together. In an organization with such fierce competition, Leaders cannot have the experience of collaboration. They lack teamwork. This played into the hands of Wu Ahan and Han So Yun. She asked her partner if he could move the way she said. Tank and Glasses stopped quarreling and decided to catch their opponents first. Wu Ahan and Han So Yun were waiting for the attack. They hoped their plan would work. They rushed forward without waiting for their opponents to attack first. Han So Yun did not rush at Glasses. Their weapons collided and sparks flew. Glasses yelled that Han So Yun had betrayed the company. He answered him that he was fed up with this bandit organization. The spectacle cleaver was flying at an alarming speed. The glass balls and jewelry attack techniques threatened to cut off Han Seo Hyun's head. Tank laughed at the fact that his rival was a young girl. He spun the morning star over his head. He wasn't going to be lenient with the child. He threw his formidable weapon at the girl, but he himself felt a sharp pain in his shoulder. With surprise, Tank saw blood pouring out of his shoulder. Wu Ahan was sure that her opponent was too stupid and would not be able to harm her. The enraged tank threw the morning star again. Wu Ahan jumped high and flew over her opponent and his weapon. She said again that his attacks are useless. Is he so stupid that he doesn't see it? She landed far from the tank and complained about his slowness. This is a boring fight. Even the one they killed was more interesting and dangerous. The tank turned into an angry bull. He swung his morning star again. The super mace technique put unprecedented power into the weapon. It was immediately followed by a nuclear strike that blew up space. Wu Ahan dodged him too. Waves of steam were coming from the tank. He was trying to see if he had nailed the impudent girl. The waves from the used technology reached the battle site of Ochka. He was unable to dodge and was wounded. Han So Hyun used the sword technique of the refreshing wind and a blow fanned by the wind and washed by the rain. The wounded glasses could not respond to these blows, and it was all over with him. The tank cursed when he saw what was left of his partner. Suddenly Wu Ahan attacked him with the pure flow sword technique and the pure flow light strike. The tank fell bleeding. Wu Ahan breathed a sigh of relief. She praised Han Xiong Yun for his excellent work. He noted that the girl's plan was excellent. It all worked because she was whining about Tank Do Hyun Bae's character and his feud with hustler Ju Maxion. They ran to help their comrades. Jin Nam Gung had a very hard time. He was very tired and injured. In Wan was confident that the fight would soon end in his victory. Finally, he told Nam Gung that he had fun fighting with him.